space. Do, would any of you be interested in running a second character? Sure, I can run a second. Yeah, I mean, I was going to say, I, I always can do that, but it's not, I mean, I hasten to want to because each of the players doesn't get equal time if you do that. And so I don't okay. know what, I don't know how the other two of you feel, but I, I'd rather like, I mean, I know we're first level and everything, but I'd rather not. And then, you know, see how well we do just with the three of us. But I mean, it's okay. up to you guys what let's, you think. Uh, let's do that. Cause I can, I can balance. Either. I can balance on the fly if we need to. I, I, we can make this work. Right. And you're right then with three characters. All right. All right, here we roll. We're late. We of, got this. Let's get rid of rid of uh, Weird Al Yankovic. And I'll be sharing a map with you. Hello, Mr. Map. Throughout the course of the of the game, feel free to call me Tony uh, if you want to. Tony or High Jumper or Hey You. Um, either of those would work just fine. Um, as many of you may have read in the email, basically um, you are at the very beginning stages of your career as, as adventurers. Um, you're all from the predominantly uh, southern portion of the Sword Coast, as is evident by the village here, or the area, Am, um, were in fact uh, characters that were living even further south of Am, and you're traveling north along the tradeway, perhaps headed up to Waterdeep and, and Baldur's Gate to learn more information about all of the craziness that's been happening through the wonderful Wizard Coast products like Horde of the Dragon Queen and Rise of Tiamat and all this underdark uh, stuff that's been going on. So you want to get sort of uh, your foot into the fray, so to speak, and, and, and begin to make your lives as mercenaries. So along your, your trip north, you decided to uh, take a little rest at the town of Perskull that you can see right there on your map. Perskull is a predominant uh, sort of half-halfling, half-human sort of kind of town. Amn is kind of known to have a, a, a quite a large halfling population. And while we're in the town of Amn, you decide to wet your whistles at a place called Jester's Pride. And I am sharing that map with you. You won't need uh, you actually, if you want to keep Om up in a moment, you could use it again if your if your computers will allow for a couple of maps there. I'm going to drag you into the Jester's Pride. Making sure that it's done on the correct layer. <laughs> the layers. Hey, don't laugh. That's many GMs, you know, tripping point. My first post on the fantasy ground boards was a layer issue. And, and I felt like an idiot. But, you know, Zacchaeus was perf perfect, though, in his explanation. He was patient and, and I <laughs> very grateful. <laughs> I just recently abandoned the layer extension myself. I couldn't take it anymore. It's yeah. a pain in the ass. It's a pain in the I, ass. I mean, it's cool, but it, if it ultimately, for what you might use it or not use it for, it wasn't worth it to me. Right. I've got just a few things that use layers, but like, like for instance, this particular table that you're standing next to, that was all pre-generated, which is wonderful. When you want special things on top of tables, that's when kind of the layers helps. But I think tokens are unlocked. So if you would like to find a place to sit, you're more than welcome to do that. Just waiting for the map to finish loading. This is a... A lot of graphics on this map, so this might be one of the, the longer ones. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, That is nice and detailed. Wow, that is pretty nice. 
I would love to take credit for it, but it it was just one of the freebies I found. I did a whole day of just searching for wonderful maps, and this came about. All right, so Greed's going to have a seat in the end of this bench here. And we all know each other, I'm assuming, because uh, we've been traveling together, yes? Yeah, I would say because of the fact that you, you didn't want to travel alone, that uh, kind of meeting each other up and for, for safety reasons and social reasons seemed to be appropriate. So, yeah. Okay, cool. All right, it's on. You're it's greeted begun, very everybody. quickly by a human um, server who welcomes you to the Jester's Pride. There oh. she is. Oh, snap. There she is. As she does a graceful pirouette. <laughs> I would even use the new, um, oh, somebody wrote a new uh, a module for all the, the different uh, drinks and, and in food and so forth that you want. But she does, she does uh, say that they do have a, a special today, black bean stew with cabbage, if anyone would like a bowl. And they have three or four different kinds of meads that are uh, kind of indigenous to this area. I love it. Greed will respond with an order of the black soup and a maid. Water, bread, cheese. Simple diet for a monk. Mm -hmm. uh, take the stew. Big hearty meal for a big hearty man. And whatever your local specialty is. We'll even get give you an, an extra large bowl, Goliath, sir. So she scurries about and quickly you notice um, uh, an elderly halfling scurrying about the establishment, carrying a, a stack of parchments with a type of a tack and a small little hammer. And um, throughout the uh, particular tavern you don't quite see it on the map but they have just support poles that just rise from the floor up to the ceiling and he's just kind of scurrying about tacking things just feverishly onto these particular posts um, he gets close to your table and he tacks one up and He, he, he gets close to your table, I'm sorry, and he tacks a, a, a flyer nearby and moves on and tacks another one on a post oh, about 10, 20 feet away. Anything that you want to do with the particular flyer that you I'll see? Look at it. Yeah. Okay. Read I'll it. go ahead and I'll go ahead and type that into the chat. What do we got here? That is what you see. Oh, snap. That looks like gibberish to me. Yep. You know. I can't read it. I'm going to go back to eating. <laughs> I'm going to reach over from where I'm sitting. I don't know if I can reach it from where I am, but I'll just grab one of the posters and... Uh, toss it down on the table between the three of us. What do y'all think? Gibberish. What's it say? They needed somebody to hunt a bear. Father Mulcahy, using his language ability of understanding halfling, was able to read that. And the other two of you noticed that the uh, the next nearby poster that he tacks up is actually written in common, and it says the exact same thing. Very soon after, uh, a female of about the same age comes from out of the bar area. Mm -hmm. 
kind of chasing after this elderly man saying, Gerard, Gerard, I told you that wasn't going to be of any use tacking up these silly flyers. No one's going to help us. That's silly. You're just absolutely wasting your time. And Gerard pretty much ignores her and continues tacking these up, <laughs> um, hoping that it will do some good. Greed Father will... Moth K, he's oh, going to chuckle. Go Sorry. Um, yep. going to chuckle and then uh, get up, um, walk over to the pair, and, and just like tap one finger on each head and look down at them. Perhaps I can be of assistance. The eyes of Gerard just pierce right into yours. And then he makes eye contact with Talon, and he makes eye contact with Greed, and he quickly sets his flyers on a nearby table and walks over to your table. He kind of shoves aside the older female halfling. He turns to the kitchen and says, these meals are on me. Oh, snap. He kind of looks at each of you and kind of as if he's sizing you up and says, are you sure that you're capable of taking on such a quest? Greed will stand up and shout, I've never let any bear beat me. Gerard smiles and laughs. <laughs> that is exactly what I was hoping to hear. <laughs> now listen, he sits down and he's like, all business. I don't know exactly what River Sly has to offer, but I do know that myself, I will offer you free food and lodging for one month here in Perskal. If you agree to travel to River Sly and talk to the halflings there and find out about their particular bear problem. Agreed? I look to my two compatriots and nod affirmatively with also a head tilt about, like, what do you guys think? Wrestling a bear seems like a good workout. Fortune smiles on the bold. Agreed. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Well, I will give you directions. It's very simple. You would follow the river to the east at approximately five miles. It should take you, oh, no longer than, say, half an hour's uh, uh, time. And the very first commune that you see right along hey, the river Kama side Sutra, what's up? is going to be where you need to go. You'll ex you'll know exactly what to do when you get there. Oh, jolly good, jolly good. He's so happy. He just kind of uh, skips off to his to his uh, what you one shot today. feel to be his wife, and um, seems so happy. Meanwhile, his wife walks around the rest of the tavern, ripping down all of the flyers that he posted. <laughs> all right. So what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to uh, display the Omn map uh, again of the uh, the Sword Coast, and and as I kind of display that. Um, if you wouldn't mind, as you are now traveling down uh, the river's edge, if you want to just talk a little bit about your characters, I know there's only three of you, and I know you haven't known the characters for long, but basically you can just say your name, race, uh, any any little kind of uh, interesting uh, tidbit of information. We don't have to go crazy on this RP, but just to kind of get to know each other a little bit. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, you want me to start? Since we're, I guess we usually go left to right. Um, yep. Uh, my name's Rob, and I'm playing Greed, who is a dwarf who carries with him two short swords and a short bow because everything about him is short except for his name, which is also kind of short, I guess. Uh, and he is... Um, a guild merchant and is interested in being as useful as he can to the party by helping in his fighter manner. Okay, that brings it to me. I am Susie. 
I am playing Talon, who is a monk of some sort of human variety. We're not real sure. Um, she is quiet and small and speaks in Proverbs. Nice. nice. Uh, Father, I'm uh, Hawkeye or Ben. I'm playing uh, Father Mulcahy um, today. Uh, Father Mulcahy is a Goliath, pa uh, Goliath battle cleric. Um, he uh, fought as a gladiator for a long time. And eventually the fighting pits became like too easy for him. So now he's entered the world as an adventurer seeking new challenges to honor the god of war. Um, he carries with him his signature weapon, which is a giant maul, which fits because he's a giant dude. Excellent. Excellent. Nice job. You can see there on the map, I uh, kind of what I did is I put a little barrel token. That's what that is. Uh, that's right next to the pointer. But that is the relative location of the River Sly commune that you were told about. That is about a five mile journey right from the Tradeway Road. And the uh, trip along to the commune goes, we would all hope, without incident. And it does. And as soon as you sort of rise upon a, a, a bit of a crest in the hill, you start to notice small little thatched houses. Um, uh, the small hills sort of have been swallowed out to form this quaint little area with cottages. And the, and the entire homestead is surrounded um, by um, four foot high walls made of neatly piled rocks, um, all except for the side along the river, of course. And you start to see, you know, families of very small individuals um, kind of scurrying about. And as you get even closer, you get more detail. And I'm going to go ahead and send that map. The map of Amn and the Sword Coast so will no longer be used if you wanted to close it. While that's loading, I will drag your token oh, onto it. Once again, on the correct layer. <laughs> I always have to remind myself. <laughs> um, That's we a happy little a, map, we're, too. We played Horde of, we're playing Horde of the Dragon Queen with my tabletop group. Some of the battles were, there were, I had 47 combatants in the combat tracker at one time. And um, yeah, I placed um, most of them on the wrong layer. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Had to fix that. That so, sounds like a grand melee. Definitely. So you can kind of see how the road leads into the village. Uh, it comes a little bit to uh, a, 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 a fork in the road, a T, so to speak. And as I say, you, you just see what, what certainly are halflings kind of scurrying about. Uh, doing their chores. Um, uh, the, the, the tokens that I have on the map aren't representative of all the different halflings that you see. They are the ones that are probably important to us. Uh, the two halflings that mm -hmm. you see really close to you are two small children. And they're just simply taking a little sort of makeshift ball that's just made up of, of lots of different linens kind of, kind of woven together and then passing it back and forth. And as they catch sight of you, one of them actually is looking at you while the other one passes the ball and it actually hits him in the face <laughs> but does no damage fortunately but they just stare at you as you sort of walk down the road so if you want to go ahead and show me like where you want to go we can interact here with the town uh i'd like to walk up to the one uh who who got hit in the face walk over and pick up the ball and say, you got to pay attention. And then toss the ball back to him. Very timidly, he says, th 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 thank you, sir. I'm going to chuckle and then move further into the town. Okay. 
Creed will nod as if he agrees with their playful attitude and follow Father. They definitely seem to be much more intrigued by Greed and uh, Father Mulcahy because of the the dwarf and the Goliath sort of combination. They see humans from time to time, um, but they are sort of they are sort of fixed a little bit upon Talon because she's dressed in these just really exquisite robes and with her hood over herself, and and, and she is you know quite a charismatic, you know quite an attractive uh, individual as well. I'll reach out awkwardly pat one on the head and just keep walking and they just stare as you walk by the two individuals that you see um, up ahead a little further those are adult halflings and in a very similar fashion you know they're uh, one of them was just carrying a basket uh, looks like it probably has clothes that was being dried and the other one had a as handful with some grains that he had picked uh, but they catch sight of you and kind of look at each other and, and, and engage in some conversation that you, even Father Mulcahy, you couldn't make out because of the, the distance that you are away from him. You do know that it is in halfling at least. And um, they seem kind of intrigued by your presence. Well, they should do. Walk up. We heard you've been having a little problem with a bear. The halfling that's right across from you um, seems to, his eyes just kind of light up and he has this kind of kind of look of confusion. He's like, oh my goodness, how, how on earth would you ever have known some kind of information like that? What, that never mind, that's not important. Are you here to help us with Bob? 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 Why, of course, that's Smiley Bob. Uh, I'm assuming that's the reason why you were here. The fact that this bear has twice in the past week attacked our homestead? You, you don't know about Smiley Bob, do you? Tell us about mm -hmm. Smiley Bob. He kind of motions you guys over... Um, I, we won't have to actually move on the map to a more kind of comfortable shaded area here in the in the town. Kind of makes a nod for his um, female companion there to to bring some refreshments. And um, he kind of like motions to the ground where we kind of all sit on the ground here together because that is sort of a very common halfling way of of interacting socially. Um, and I'm going to assume that that you know, living in the southern part of the Sword Coast, you're somewhat familiar with that. He says, "Well, Smiley Bob. Well, Smiley Bob was never a problem. Uh, Smiley Bob just roamed the countryside here next to the commune, and until oh, well, probably five years ago, when that insolent Reed Tinderfoot ran afoul, and apparently dealt this bear a." some kind of grievous wound, I would say. And ever since that encounter, this bear has just avoided all contact with the halflings. We hadn't seen this bear for up to five entire years. Um, but as I've said before, two weeks ago, that seemed to be changing because we've unfortunately lost two of our brethren. And he seems very sad when he says that. The first victim was a very precocious halfling by the name of Happy Shoals. He was taken just three days ago. Um, I'm sorry, seven, uh, eight days ago. And uh, the second victim, a very, a, a very fond halfling, very dear to my heart, named Pumpkin Rockhucker. She was just taken yesterday. He almost has a hard time getting the words out. I mean, you could almost see some some tears well up in his eyes. Uh, and meanwhile, his wife comes with the drinks and starts offering uh, a little jars of a refreshing sort of citrus um, concoction. Women do not drink liquor, but when they are around, it disappears. <laughs> so you see, Smiley Bob is certainly a nuisance and Anything that you can do, uh, we would be forever, forever grateful. We, we we don't have much here, but 
but uh honey do you do you, do you have the the item that we were uh, going to use for such an, an occasion with you still and his wife reaches into her little uh, pouch and um pulls out um a a, a sort of cloth covered um item that she has wrapped up um that seems to be um a, a gem of sorts sort of like an amethyst gem and another little pouch that has a, a small bit of of coinage and he says this is all that we have we don't have much you see we're quite a, a self-sufficient commune but we would be more than glad to uh, offer you this and 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 you would always be a welcome friend of us halfling folk here in river sly if you're able to do this because we we're halflings you see and we just don't have the uh, we just don't have the strength and the gumption and and there are no fighters in this town unfortunately so are you agreeable to do this task um uh father mulcahy is going to look around at the others and um i don't know if we've taken jobs before or whatnot but um if we have mulcahy he's perfectly fine with taking maybe half of the reward he doesn't need uh he doesn't need payment he's in this for the for the the challenge greed steps forward and says we accept your offer oh thank you thank you thank you oh i i'm so relieved and, and you see another group of three halfling children that you probably noticed on the map and and one of them comes up to you uh, next to you greed and he kind of yanks on your cloak and says uh, good sir uh, are you the ones who are going to take care of the smiley bulb problem and greed says Haha, yes you don't worry young one we will take care of your problem and Harlan, who is the male um, adult halfling, who actually had kind of introduced himself, I may have forgotten, as sort of the, the mayor here of the town. He kind of motions over to that halfling, and Rob, you might get a kick out of this, and says, Pepwin, be good. Don't bother the, the, the good sirs. <laughs> this is actually 40 years earlier prior to our adventure that we had today. <laughs> Pepwin is a character that I've played today in, in, in Gwydion's campaign that actually um, died uh, an instant death. It was not, it was not fun. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Um. Another one of the children actually steps in uh, and kind of addresses not only, uh, not only greed, but, but all three of you. And, and, and he says, or she says, rather, wait a minute, you're not going to kill Bob are you? Are you going to kill Bob? I was wondering about that. <laughs> we you shall said see. they were taken? These other uh, poor unfortunate souls, they were taken by the bear? Do you know where? And were they alive? Harlan answers you and says, yes, we know that they were alive because... On the outskirts of our town, uh, one of our citizens did hear at least the second abduction with um, the, the, young, the young lady, um, Punkin. Uh, we did hear her cry off into the distance. But by the time that we were able to ascertain what the situation was, the bear oh, had, long, had long had a head start on us, and uh, our little halfling legs could not, could not bear chase. Um, no pun intended. As far as the location, uh, it's just about two miles right along the river. We believe that the bear has been uh, taking up residence in an old abandoned windmill. And if you just follow the river straight to the east, you will have absolutely no trouble finding the windmill. Uh, but, uh, but, but please, I, 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 I bid you be careful. This bear is a very, very viable foe. And I, I just don't think that I could live with myself if I knew Your that uh, individuals off my charge uh, had to uh, meet a, a very unfavorable uh, outcome. Well, we shall take care. All right. 
Well, uh, with that, um, it's it's still it's only about mid morning. Uh, you you were in uh, preschool around the lunchtime, so there's still plenty of daylight left. Um, we're going to call it somewhere around one thirty, maybe one o'clock, and it's just a short, uh, just few minutes walk um, to where the windmill is. Um, is there anything else that you want to do here in in the uh, commune before you head off? Um. Just as an aside, High Jumper, I would like to mention that much like speaking with a person on the cell phone, the background noise is a little, to me, louder than you are. So whoever's talking in the room you're in, I can hear them better than I can hear you. Duly noted. It's my son playing Xbox. I will uh, have a chat with him. <laughs> As far as what we want to do in the town before we leave, what do you guys think? I want to play Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> it's a marvelous invention. It seems. It's a marvelous, uh, wonderful wizardy box that they have. And what is this Nintendo I hear so? <laughs> yeah, what is this PlayStation? Sounds like a lovely place. No, uh, I think I'm good to go. I think so. I think we can be off. We've had a meal, and we've got our things, and we've got each other. All right, let's go kill the sea witch. All right, so, sounds good. So as we're walking down the river and getting a new map, I would assume, um, I'd like to uh, talk with my compa companions So, the bear hasn't killed anyone yet, as far as we know. Smiley Bob? He seems like a town mascot or pet or something. Maybe he just has a thorn in his paw. I mean... It could be. Would this be something that perhaps you're saying within earshot of, of Harlan? Possibly. Uh, I was just going to talk about it as we left town, as we were heading upstream. I'm not sure when I would have started. You know, actually, it, it won't matter because, because what's happening is as you're leaving, one of the small halfling children runs up to you and says, oh, ex excuse me, uh, father had asked that I give <laughs> these items to you for your journey. And you should be able to see them in the party sheet if I did this correctly. Uh, oh, snap. And I would like each of you, if you haven't done it already, and I don't think any of you have, give yourself each inspiration because you are doing such a wonderful deed by helping these uh, less fortunate people. Second good deed for the day. Uh, I'm on point. Uh, I think we'll each take one uh, potion. That sounds good. Yep. And I'm not kidding that three was the actual... Great number, uh, even if we had six party members, so that could have been interesting, but three works out pretty well today, huh? Sure does. And as you're divvying those out, to uh, answer the other question, because the, the, the young halfling, who actually is the uh, daughter of uh, Harlan, um, mentions that, oh, I, I, I understand that you're not quite sure why we call him Smiley Bob. Well, the reason is because when Reed Tinderfoot took that that shiny sword and bashed it against Smiley Bob's face. And, she, and she's almost kind of like over dramatic as she's explaining this. It, it sure did cut a big old, big old rip out of his face. And, and, you know, over time it healed and it looks like it's this permanent smile on the bear. So we have always called him Smiley Bob since, but Smiley Bob has changed. And we, we, we hope that you're able to, to do whatever you can without hurting Smiley Bob, of course. And then she just runs off in the other direction, almost like she doesn't want to hear the answer. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to get moving. I'm going to go ahead and send another map. Strange small people. Was there a comma in there? 
<laughs> As in, did you say strange small people or did you say strange small people? <laughs> strange small people. Okay. Agreed. All of the clear. above. It All seems. of the above. us to save a bear that's taking their children and possibly eating them. This just screams codependent relationship all over it. <laughs> that's great. Hey, Obsidian's Obsidian Father Snow. Father Mulcahy's forehead is going to furrow a bit as he tries to figure out. Thanks for the follow. I did not see that happen, but I just noticed that you did. So thank you so much for the follow. On our quest to four to five hundred, we have four hundred twenty-seven followers. When we hit five hundred that day, we will be giving away a Fantasy Grounds license to one of the lucky followers. And I'm if that follower already has Fantasy Grounds, squares here? they will be able to give it to a loved one or a is the map gamer. Still loaded? I've the got map it. Appears got it. to be loaded. Am I connected? Can y'all hear me? Yes. Yep. Yes. There is a bridge. Greed is always suspect of a troll under a bridge. Trip, trap, trip, trap. <laughs> what you're looking at here is actually, um, it, it's not the actual river itself. It's a small sort of, uh, you know, kind of a feeding creek that goes into the river that's actually a little bit farther south that's off the map. And you're kind of at a point where just as you get close to this bridge up ahead, you can see an old, tattered arm of a windmill. Now, it would be way off the, to the right of the map here. Um, and, and still, oh, I would say a good 200 yards probably still to go. Um, but what I would like you all to do is, um, in the tower, please, make a perception check. We have no tower. Yep. I need to bring a tower in, don't I? That can be done in settings, I believe, right? Yeah, it's a GM tower. Uh, it's the last one. It says table dice tower. It's the last one of the GM game. There you go. Yep, I see it. Good. Uh, perception in the tower, you said? Yes, sir. Did that do it? Yep, I got all three of them. Excellent, excellent. Okay. Nothing really seems to be out of the unusual. Sometimes I'll ask for perception checks when they're not even needed anyway. So much more fun that way. It's so dirty of me, isn't it? <laughs> and then I would like you at this point to also make... Um, or at least, I, I would also like you to make a dexterity check in the tower. Oh my, I have an unfortunate modifier. <laughs> Okay. Um, it was a, uh, <laughs> luckily it was a I have an group check modified. and two of you passed. So I wonder who could have failed. <laughs> <laughs> and you actually, you actually, um, I, I, I'm going to go ahead and assume that you were going to go ahead and ascend the bridge. There, there didn't seem to be anything out of an, out of the ordinary in the bridge. And you can actually put yourselves um, at the top of the bridge, and I think I'll probably lock tokens at this point. Gwydion just and went as I live said, you cross the bridge, you kind of notice the top of a slouching 
dilapidated He's got a game also. stone windmill rising above a few trees that are off in the distance that dot the landscape. Uh, beneath its torn sails, there's there's uh, you can get the kind of the, the the basic kind of beginnings of a wooden framed doorway that that stands open. But what catches your attention more than anything is several yards in front of the windmill lurk several small humanoid creatures with this dirty yellow skin and pointy ears. And they noisily are hurling rocks at one another as if they're playing some sort of a crude game. And up until this point, they do not seem to notice you. And I'm going to let you see them here in just a bit. Oops, I didn't mean to move the whole map. I meant to move it like that. Oh, there they are. Son so as you can bitch. see, they're standing about, uh, oh, 40 feet or so apart. And there's just one rock that's being used. And they are just throwing that rock with all their might, sort of a soccer throw-in style. And you notice that the recipient of the rock is just simply standing still, kind of shaking a little bit. You see their kind of lips quivering. Apparently the rules of the game are that you can't move when the rock is being thrown at you. And you actually see uh, a couple of uh, times that a rock does just barely make contact, perhaps hitting the ground first and then hitting some one of these creatures on the kneecap and they kind of let out a little, yo! But it's just a very strange game. Goblin demolitioner. <laughs> what would you like to do? Look back at my uh, <laughs> companions. Uh, do we recognize them as goblins? Have we seen? Because goblins are so common in, in these realms, I'm not going to make any kind of a check. If it was some other kind of uh, a, a less common entity, I would say certainly. These are no doubt goblins. Goblin? And I think it says I mean, goblins on top anyway. It does say goblins on our yeah, uh, does. tracker. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know that. Um, See, I'm just trying to build it up, you know. Yeah. So I'm going to look back at my companions and say softly, goblins playing games? Shall we join in? Uh, we can join in, but it might be more fun to just watch them throw rocks at each other until they're <laughs> until they're through. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm okay with watching for a bit. This is puzzling, but see if they knock each other unconscious. Yeah, I'm more than willing to let them take each other out. Yeah, good enough. I'm going to make some rolls here. I mean, why would we want to stop, One too many stop rolls. such a fantastic activity? Within about three or four minutes of playing, as one of the goblins kind of bends over to pick up a rock, he very just on a stroke of luck kind of rises his head up looking to his left and he notices there are people on the bridge. Let's roll for initiative. Oh, snap. Okay, when the quick goes first. Okay, he does yep. not. <laughs> does not. Taylin. I would like to take this opportunity to like wave at them and just grin a little bit. Go on with your game. <laughs> All right, Taylor, what would you like to do? Yeah, are they starting to like pull weapons and stuff like that? You know, the, the goblin that actually saw you did kind of um, yell out, well, at, in fact, you know, I could do this via the uh, the chat with the with the foreign language goblin. But I know that at least one of you speaks goblin. You want to double that check for me? Okay. So I'm going to say that you're going to relay that on so that we can save time. But uh, you basically hear him say, intruders, alert. And they do sort of take a couple of steps. They do have their weapons on them. 
Um, they uh, seem to all be carrying um, Ooh. A, a scimitar shaped sort of sword. Bring the game. And, and a few of them even have Thanks short for the follow on their backs. Thank you so much. Bring the game for the follow. Moving up then. You are now a member of this Twitch okay. community, and you will be notified of yeah. shenanigans happening at this channel, which are most definitely almost exclusively 5e Dungeons and Dragons using Fantasy Grounds, as is this. So, thanks for yeah, watching. Not sure if you're in range to do anything if you want to, or... No, I'm not in range. I'm... Okay, oops, I, I think I need to start. That would be nice to start the combat. There we go. <laughs> okay. Uh, I will draw. Greed will draw his short bow and proceed forward a bit. Uh, and since they are aggressive, he will take a shot. And he has a range of 80 for short, so I don't have to take a disadvantage on my shot. And let's see what we get. Oh, snap. The first draw of the day. First blood. Oh, wow. <laughs> nice shot. Let's see. You got goblin number one. No sense in naming him, huh? And I will pass my turn, and I did move uh, forward for that shot, so that I would okay. be within range. Sounds good. That brings us to one of the combatants. It's actually one of the ones that's towards the back, the one that's, well, you'll see him soon enough. There's something about this goblin that's just a little different, you notice. Um, he... Uh, he does not have uh, a bow around his back. Uh, he does have a sword at his at his side, but he he instead of rushing towards you, he he actually. I used to use actually, those same Overwatch alerts. <laughs> yeah, the runs, the person that you're looking at on the video is not the DM of this over game. Here I'm, a, his tree, I'm playing sort greed. Of, kind of definitely out of the view. Uh, it's still, you know, a time of the year when the foliage on the trees are quite thick. So he has very substantial cover. You you really can't see much of anything that he's doing. These are very low-lying trees, almost bushes and shrubbery, so to speak. And um, that that's all he does. You should probably uh, move Greed forward. Uh, his token doesn't appear to have moved yet. Oh, sorry. Rookie DM. Sorry about that. All right, we move on to, interestingly enough, the the particular goblin that was a, across from the one that uh, just moved. He does a very similar movement as well, just sort of to the south. Uh, yeah, the, I'm just happy to get a chance um, to see other people playing D&D &D on you know, I, I, Yeah, absolutely. I want to go ahead and, and do this. Hopefully I broadcast okay six days that, a week on this channel. be appropriate. And I DM a lot of them, and some of them I play in. But this is a special one-off game that we're doing today. Usually on Sundays, I don't do anything. Uh, that's my day off. Scurry <laughs> little blighters. We had two go? games today. Goblin number two. Now, he... 5, 10, 15, 20. He stops right... Yes, nice. There's going to be some kind of slinging, rocky so, kind of a thing here. I know there is. I know it. Uh, Talon. And... Oh, got to double click. And that would be a miss. The arrow flies high over Talon. Uh, the two of you on the bridge kind of hear it click, 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 skip off the wooden planks of the bridge. Ooh, I like his descriptions. Those are nice. This skip goblin then um, basically the um, starts to notch up another, another or 
or in the process of trying to notch up another bow, and that would end his turn. Which brings us to Goblin 3, who's on the other side of him. Kind of stands next to his compatriot with Fireball. a bow oh, not. Sorry, I got excited. And he <laughs> lets one fly at greed. And that would be for another miss. And <laughs> this one actually... This one actually skips off the handrail of the bridge and pff, you kind of hear it splash into the little creek below. These goblins are dead eye. They're going to kill this bridge dead. And the goblin that's just uh, to the far the south is next. He kind of moves up. He moves up behind this rock, and if he were to stay there for future, um, and you know, ranged weapon, he would be granted a, a small light cover, and he's going to target our good friend Talon. And that would be a miss. Oh, these goblins are fantastic. <laughs> They're too tired from playing the rock game. Their arms hurt. It's very possible. Okay, Father Bukehi, you are up. So. Should be able to move up a little bit, I think. Um, would that give me a better line of sight on that guy? Yeah, I would say um, since you're at the crest uh, over the top of the bridge, you're still actually up a little higher than them. So you've got excellent line of sight. The only question now is just range. Yes, well, I'm going to be throwing a thing. So eh, I'll move down. Hopefully I can get in range and still have peek around the rock. If not, eh, we'll improvise. Certainly. All right, so I'm going to shout, throwing game, and uh, pull one of my hand axes and chuck it. Excellent. Oh, and it flies just over his left shoulder, landing about 20 feet behind him. He actually kind of looks back and is surprised that that uh, you would have such a weapon and do such a thing with it. Jay's okay, just going to chuckle and be like, better next time, eh? Yep. All right. Up to the top. That was our first six seconds. Taylin, you're up. Awesome. May I ask how you made your new buttons different colors? Yes, uh, really you may certainly ask that. that. Um, I'm actually not the person who's running this table. Okay, takes uh, away obviously. So I didn't cover. do it, but the yeah, the DM who's running this table is using an extension called More Colors that is or a very something good like hit. that. But I anyway, mean a vicious hit that just it is a, grabs him right by the uh, side of the neck. Color extension. Luckily, and he has a thick neck. Search for in the Fantasy Grounds forums. Face. Excellent. And I, I think it's named that or something similar to that. Color color side Solid buttons blow. or something like that. And I, I, I'm sorry that I don't know the exact uh, yeah. name. And he is heavily wounded. You, you notice that he was a pretty tough little goblin. He was able to kind of resist some of the potential heavy damage. Greed. All right. Greed is going to proceed forward. Uh, and will uh, once again loose a loose an arrow at his target and hopefully oh at least i did some damage nice hit boy your your attack rolls are great just the kind of low on the damage rolls but definitely definitely had a little bit of an impact and i yell run away <laughs> Let's 
went too far with the combat trekker. Okay. Um, the, um, the goblin that uh, had run to the north that you no longer can see doesn't and seem to be doing anything that you bring the game. He's not kind of interfering. There's you actually you two see of those of weapon extensions. or even flying from there. So I think there are two, but there uh, you see that the goblin that went to the south. One of the buttons on the right is a, is the sound button here. That's kind of still gray. But the goblin number two though, because that is an extra button for uh, an extra Kaelin sound targeted. extension is actually going to take a few steps closer. So there is one that covers also turning that a different color too. So you have to just kind of search and see what they have. Oh man, she's in trouble. And hold just a second here. We've got a fighter, a monk, and a, okay. and a Goblins what? do not have a pack tactic type of attack, so they don't get any advantage even though they're with their compatriots. They do have the nipple escape, though. Nipple escape. So he n nimble. Oh, nipple nimble! Escape. Oh man, I got excited. You're so he's going to uh, <laughs> sort of drop his bow as he's running towards you, and and take out the scimitar and take an attack at Talon. And that would be a, another miss. Ending his turn. Goblin three. Ooh, darn the luck. Their movement is only 30 feet. So he's actually just going to take maybe a couple of more steps up, thinking that he can probably get just a little bit better aim, and he's going to let another arrow fly towards greed. <gasps> oh, no. Goblins can actually hit something. but not for much damage. He rolled a one, three points of damage to greet. And that would end his turn. Goblin four, boy, these things just keep coming, don't they? Goblin four, who's already engaged with Talon, is going to take out the scimitar, dropping the bow. Ow. And that would be a hit for Oh, good. Oh, no. Max yeah. damage. Max slashing damage. Ow. On I thought that would go boom. Goodness. Yeah, when they finally did hit, they didn't mess around. All right, Father Mulcahy. All right, this isn't cool. So Mulcahy's going to stride over, uh, step over, uh, his falling faith tree at move between these two goblins if I can. Okay. Look down at him and go, shouldn't have done that. Oh, man. Oh, or, <laughs> or maybe <laughs> they should have. Um, <laughs> and for some... <laughs> For simplicity, Rob, I'm not going to run your crit table. I absolutely love it. I just thought maybe it might be a little too overwhelming for me. Okay, yeah, no, that's no time. problem. <laughs> but trust, um, trust me, I use it with my other group, though. <laughs> all right, so, okay, he's walking up. He's swinging his maul. He just, like, slams it into the dirt and grunts a little bit and is, like, uh, channels the the inspiration of his war god and takes a second swing as a bonus action which i can do like three times a day i think at this point okay sounds Sweet. good so let's try this again <laughs> oh my god <laughs> holy crap oh fuck uh, something oh my is god. wrong with my mall today well <laughs> Um, that's oh, move, action, and bonus. Perhaps it's not um, balanced. The chances of rolling two my ones in a is row is definitely not balanced. Are one in a Taryn, your first check is a success. Or Taylor, I'm awesome. sorry. Oh, good. Awesome. A little good news, finally. Okay, and that would bring us to Greed. All right, well, Greed is going to... 
abandon his crossbow and draw one of his short swords, which is all he can do. And are we using the flanking rules or we're not? Yes, we are certainly using uh, Then he will come to here. And with his short sword, he will swing with advantage and hopefully do well. Oh, he does very well. All right. It was just enough. It was just a horrible damage roll, but it was just enough. Slay goblin number two. And, and then I believe he has enough to then reposition himself there. I I don't know what you like. Is the rock? I know you were saying it was cover, but is it also like? Can I get into that square if the rock is there? I don't know how you. Oh yeah, do that. certainly, no, certainly. Because okay. I, I mean, if you look at just the scale of the map, there's three feet. You're a dwarf. No, not a okay. Problem. All right, cool. So then I'll go there. Okay. I, 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 sorry, I'd forgotten to mention. I meant to put that in my message of the day, and then we had the port forwarding issue, and I didn't get to fill that up with uh, the other rules about the, the flanking. And then, you know, there is another rule that I'd like to use, but I, I'm not going to use it because it's difficult to use it in fantasy grounds. But being the math teacher that I am, diagonal movement drives me crazy because it can be so exploited because it's actually the square root of two times the amount of distance that you could normally get. And that's pretty significant. That's like 1.4%, 40% more movement just by moving diagonally. But Fantasy Grounds makes that kind of tough to do from what I understand. You know, that. there is actually a rule and there is in the options, uh, there's a rule in 5E that the first diagonal square costs you 10 feet rather than five. And Correct, that and rule... then it alternates. Yeah, 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 and and you can turn that rule on, and it will mm -hmm. adjust our movement. Okay, it does. Oh, interesting. See, I, I never found that. But it's all the way down at the bottom under map diagonal distance, and you have it at standard. You can turn it on to whatever the other choice is. Okay. You know what? I'm going to keep it at standard since we started that way, but that's good to know because in my other games at Tabletop, we've been kind of doing it manually, so that's good. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah. Okay, uh, another goblin had been slain, so I need to make a roll here. I need to make a little check roll. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, interesting. Goblin, nipple escape. Name for their <laughs> My favorite new ability. Uh, fuck. Failing battle. Definitely not. Goblin number three. That is, is a good tip. Very yes. Very concerned about two of his compatriots, uh, kind of <laughs> biting the dust. And all of a sudden, you know, he, he kind of like hesitates for a little bit. His body is kind of quivering. He takes a couple of steps back. And then in an instant, he turns around. Better uh, run away. And he just makes a beeline. He's going to take off. Direction. Oh, and snap. Let's see if I can turn him right. He ran. All right, and then Goblin 4, who seems to be um, surrounded here, uh, he looks at probably the biggest threat at this point to be the, the biggest threat at this point to be the wily, uh, the wily cleric who's healthy. And he's going to target him. Big and impressive smashing like craters in the ground. I'm just making a little indicator of where I dropped my bow in case I need to know that in a minute. Okay. All right. Goblin Goblin 4, why can you not untarget Talon? He wants to kill her again? Yeah, it's I got uh, Mulcahy targeted, but when I control click on Talon in the combat tracker doesn't go away. I don't know. Once you're dead, can you get deader? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, well, if you take damage, hmm. you will take a death failure. Yeah. Right. And we, I want to try to to keep that from happening. Hmm. Goodness. Goodness. Goodness.
Well, I could, I could uh, take Talon really quickly off the combat tracker and then put her back in. Does that? It doesn't seem work to, to click her? her token on the map or the combat tracker. Yeah, because I don't yeah, have I, her. I did both, like and from... yeah, neither one. Hmm. Yeah, for I my can combat untarget. tracker, it doesn't have her targeted. Yeah, I can I can target and untarget her as well. Let me remove her from the map, and I'll put her back on. Her initiative was 18. We know the rest of it, so. Welcome back. That seemed to do it. Okay. All right. So he has got Father Mulcahy targeted. So good. He will try Jiminy his scimitar. Jiminy Moncus. Jiminy Moncus. That's a that's a that's a Jiminy Monka and Ebas combined. That is well. Yes. Oh, oh, Chrome ran out of memory again. What in the hell is the problem? And, and an eighteen will hit my armor class. Yeah, I just I did not have you targeted. Now I do. That's got to be a thing on your computer, Jiminy, because that's twice that's happened. Minimum here. damage. Thankfully. Now, he does have a nimble escape. So, seeing as how he's <laughs> quite, quite, quite busy with two of you on either side, he's going to go ahead and take his uh, bonus action that will be disengage. Oh, that's going to make greed mad. There I go, abusing my uh, my uh, movement rule there. <laughs> and that will be his move. <laughs> Father Mulcahy. Go get her, Ray! Anybody? Anybody know what I'm referring to? I reset Windows, got to do something I reinstalling now. Wounds. So, he's going to glance fine with the thing. Uh, say, great! Take care of that little blighter. And I am going to... Do I have target and target it? It seems like that token is no longer connected to the tail and that's on the combat tracker. You're saying Father Mulcahy's isn't? Uh, no, Talon. When I clicked on her on the map, it didn't target her, but when I click on her name on the tracker, it does. Also, I don't appear to have taken any damage? Or Yeah, I didn't take any damage, so... Okay, I'll um, apply that manual. That was three, I believe, wasn't it? I don't know. It didn't show on my screen. Oh, that's right. Um, you don't see it. It was three. One plus two. Mm -hmm. I got it. However... Um, Healing does appear to have worked. I can hit with a healing spell. So, uh... Woohoo! Good. So, Talon is up with only two wounds. Six hit points. And just in time, right? Uh... Yeah! Oh, yeah! It's your turn next! Yeah, so that token that's on the map needs to be replaced. Because it still shows her as a gray dot. Okay, so I'll just take Talon off. There we go. Yeah, what I did is when I removed it from the combat tracker, I didn't replace her token with that new version right. of her. You're good to go, Talon. Okay, well, nobody knocks baby down. <laughs> nobody puts baby in a corner. Exactly, nobody puts baby in a corner. And I'm going to smack the crap out of him. Oh, the quarter smack just flies over his head as he makes the duck just in time. Yeah, and then I'm going to punch him in the face. The boot. Oh my. Oh, you know what? Greed, you were prone. Oh, goodness. Taylor. Your movement. Oh, I'm sorry, Taylor. Taylor, you oh, were prone. Sorry, yep. Nope, never mind then. Well, that's okay. Well, no back. damage was taken. So I tell you what, though, what we're going to do is just let you make that 15. movement. You can do a, you can do your, um, um, a ranged attack instead. Yeah, we'll do that instead. Yeah, just move me back 15 and then I'll throw a dart at him. 
Sounds good. Oh, and the dart just flies over the goblin's head. Oh my god. Anything else? I think you've got a little movement if you want. Well, not nope, much. Are good. you pretty much it? Okay, greed. All right. As greed rushes over to the goblin, he will draw his second short sword and prepare to wacky wacky twicey twicey. Just misses. And the second hits. Hey, somebody can do one damage. <laughs> yeah, because the, yeah, the, the offhand, offhand weapon has no modifier. Yeah. Yay. It's, all, it's always the offhand that hits. Yeah. yeah, right. But he he is uh, very, very, very critically wounded. I mean, you can see he's leaving a trail of goblin blood as he moves away. Awesome. All right, that takes us to three. That takes us to Goblin Three, who uh, is quite busy trying to get the heck out of Dodge. And he actually he gets to this point. He stops a little bit, kind of slows down, just to look over his shoulder, just to see as you know assess the situation. So I won't let him move his full uh, twice his speed on his dash. That takes us to Goblin 4, who is toe-to-toe -to -toe with Greed right now. He will attack with his scimitar. And that will miss. Yay. And he will do a little bit of escaping himself. That make greed even angrier. Now all of a sudden I, I talk like I'm... <laughs> <laughs> and Father Okehi, you are up. Alright, so we're going to take... Actually, go up there. I don't know if that... Whatever. Uh, I'm going to follow after him. And as I... I turned that weird, but anyway. Um, as I stride after him, I swing my uh, maul around. And as I get to about the end of my movement, I slam the end into the dirt and call down fire from heaven on this Sounds awesome. fleeing goblin. So, did that... Did he make the save or not? Or no, 30... What? I need to move him back. I'm sorry. I was... I, I gave him five more movement than he should have. So, yeah, he's right there. Um, okay, so he's going to... Sorry. Br uh, I'll get you caught up here. Uh, he did succeed on his saving throw. All right, so he just scurries to the side as fire sears the dirt. Okay, he's just going to grunt. This is not his day. Okay, uh, Taylin, round five. Okay, let's move up a little bit. And we'll sh fire another dart at him. Somebody land a blow. That's a hit? Yeah. Yay. No way he'll survive that. He goes down. Anything else, Taylor? Nope. Okay. Greed will run to there, drop one of his swords on the ground, and pick up his bow. Okay. And... I will have disadvantage to shoot Goblin 3. And I miss. 
Yeah, I think it was a two and a six. And it gave me the two. <laughs> of course. Goblin 3 continues his march onward, uh, which actually is to the edge of the map. From your perspective, you can tell where he's headed. He's headed into the windmill. Eh, uh -oh. I'll keep him in the tracker, just but I'll know that he's uh, no longer in play. And then, um, then if if just, uh, I mean, depending on how you want to do it, high jumper. But I do have a three hundred and twenty foot range, so I would probably get one or two more shots at him if rounds progressed and he was running away still. You are correct. I and I have the data here. I know exactly how far the edge of this map is. You'll get two. You'll get two because it'll be two turns. So okay, all right, fair enough. So we'll just remember that that okay. he can still be targeted at disadvantage. Okay, great. All right. Well, now all of a sudden, the the, the goblin that was up on the top, which goblin demolitioner, what the heck, right? You're probably thinking <laughs> he he takes a couple of steps out and he, he's carrying. Uh, Grenades. Sort of a, a a wound up linen kind of ball. Oh that shit! He had dipped inside of a of a, of some kind of a of a bucket that was laying um, right there behind the tree. Oh man! And this he had used a, 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 a flint stone, which oh, is what, not not a Barty rubble, but a flint stone. <laughs> and he a actually uh, it? It took several, obviously four rounds to make this it. happen. And so he's kind of swinging this around his head. That's my sound effects. And he's going to kind of hurl it in the direction. Uh, he will do so at disadvantage because it's you're not close enough. <laughs> so he's Is actually he? going to he's actually going to hurl it at a space that I'm going to mark. Is he hurling a flaming ball of yuck at us? Yeah, he's he's a demolitioner. So that's where he's aiming. And I had to kind of code this in. And we'll see how so good we'll it works. We'll see how this goes. Yeah, no. Um... <laughs> Yeah, it's not really against an armor class because it's not at an individual. So I have a, a way I'm doing this. Well, this wouldn't okay. be a deck that, save, would it? That square is not where the target lands. Instead, it lands 1d4 times 5. So that would be 10 feet in this direction. And I know, Rob, there is a way I know I could put that on a table and do a much better job. So that's something that maybe we'll talk about later. But six would be to the eight, seven, six, west. right to the west. So it lands actually over here. Whoops. I don't want to drag the map with me, but that's where it lands. And as it hits the ground, it, it kind of like kind of envelops the ground in a, in a, you know, fairly decent sized fireball. And the only People that take damage would be the grass at that point. And then the fire quickly dissipates. So he's just wasted a firebomb. And he's like, bah, 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 kind of cussing in goblinese. At that point, the other goblin demolisher, just a mirror image of, of, of what the other one did. He actually is going to step a couple of more steps closer. And he's going to do the same thing but without uh, disadvantage. And you know what? I didn't even roll disadvantage on that previous one because I had forgotten, uh, but it was a miss anyway. And we're not using the critical miss table. All right, so he's going to do the same. This is fantastic. The, the square is actually the square that's in front of you. I probably ought to make note of that. Okay, and he does hit. He does hit in that square. So what I want the two of you to do is to go ahead and make a dexterity save, please. Um, yeah, go ahead and do it in the tower. Okay. 
Okay. Dick's no dirty. Dick's wrong. dirty. Unfortunately, both both were failures. Both were failures. Not a oh snap! How much do they take? I'll have to apply this damage manually. And again, I know that there's a better way to do this, but I, this was one of the things that I was going to fix uh, before I had my woes. And see, that other one was on Father Mulcahy. Yep. Okay. And that, that's it. It's just, a, it's just a small amount of damage because it's a very crude, crude weapon of fire, and it doesn't quite have the, the 1D6 um, at, at this point. It takes a... a a special trigger to allow the damage to just be a little bit stronger. So he's a little happy that he was able to get both of you with one of them. And then we move to Goblin 3, which is the one that's on the run still. So he's getting a little closer to the windmill. Father Mulcahy. I want to squash a goblin. <laughs> Please, please, let me not roll a one. Squash him. Hit. That'll do. Crunch. Crunch. And he staggers back as the as the maul just rips a section out of his out of his his his, his kind of lower abdomen, and he actually falls flat into the oil. Uh, bucket that was just behind him a few feet. Oh, no. <laughs> it catches fire. No, no. That that would be a cool effect, though. If he okay. hadn't already thrown the thing, that could have been a mess. Alrighty. Anything else, Father McKay? Nope. I'm good. Up to Talon. Awesome. All right. We're going to move ourselves on up. And we're going to hit him with a dart. All right. Very nice hit. Oh, you hit him right in the throat with the dart. Very heavy damage. Hey. He's actually grabbing for his throat and actually having a hard time breathing. <laughs> <laughs> well, Greed, having seen the situation, is once again going to change tactics and forget about the guy running away. He's going to drop his bow, pick up his other short sword, and go there. Try to kill mm. this guy. Hit. Yay. And he f Yay. and he falls. Maybe not so dramatically as the other one. And as he falls, actually out of his pocket, you see another one of those little balls wound up linens. Of course, this one not um not lit yet, but you can tell that he had dipped it into the uh into the water. And uh in in, in next to it comes a, a his little sort of quick access tinder tinder flint um, mechanism that he can use to light it oh well we shall appropriate that you certainly can now i do not know what to call it um so we might have to do some manual work with with that we'll, we'll get it figured out we can we could certainly figure it out it's not the way i know rob you'd probably like to do that but no we'll no that's all right out. yeah whatever we have to do I had a really good idea for it last night uh, in the middle of the night. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's exactly what I'm going to do. It's going to be perfect. And I said, I'll just do it between my games. And then I had trouble. So. All right. At this time, Goblin 3 is going to make it to the windmill. We're going to, we're going to go ahead and say, um, because that would end round six, which would have been the second round. So, Well, we have survived. We have survived this particular awesome. encounter. 
And then I'm going to, I'm not going to worry so much with experience. We'll, we'll take care of that at the end, but because it's a one shot and so forth, I think it can kind of speed things up. But um, I don't okay. know anything you want to do in this area still. Uh, Greed is going to retrieve his weapon that is on the ground and also would like to try to uh, look for spent arrows. Yeah, I want my darts. Excellent. Yeah, go ahead and you, you do the standard procedure, roll, the slash die, how many ever you expended. Yeah, the way I do it is is um, roll the roll the number uh, spent and get back half or the die, whichever is greater. Yeah, that's what is I that, Is that what you want to do? Okay. Yeah, I learned that from you guys. So two... um, Can I just retrieve my hand axe? You certainly can. Yep, it's actually not too far from where you're standing. Sweet. So I'm gonna grab that. Um, I'm gonna probably shout to the others as we collect our stuff. Should hurry. The bear. I don't want to know what that goblin is doing. Actually, I do want to know. Um, and I'm just gonna start striding over there as soon as I grab my axe. Um, I'd like to drink my health potion as I walk, because I'm feeling a little bit beat up. Okay, you can certainly do that. Two D four plus two. Yeah, I'm gonna chug that health potion. Well, I can roll those dice fine. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> nice. Completely healed. And you still all have your your inspiration. Well. All right. Off to the windmill. All right. All right. Off we go. All right. Talon's healed too. I will share another map here in a moment. I will retain my healing potion and probably have to give it to someone else because I have second wind. What's up? And a ton of hit points, actually. Yeah, I do, because I'm a fighter. <laughs> I'm a fighter with a plus two con. Anxious to see what you guys think of this map. I had to do a little surgery on this guy. It's a pretty small map, though. Hopefully it loads quickly. Cool. Be right back. Okay. I'll kind of situate your tokens there um, and then explain kind of where you are. Now... <laughs> Rob Rob might be be able to appreciate this because I know he's playing Horde of the Dragon Queen and he's been through the Castle Neartar chapter where the maps are just so screwed up in that particular um, rendering because of from one level to the next, they actually reorient north and south and it's just a nightmare for a DM. So this is kind of what's happened here. <laughs> you can kind of see that you're actually coming from the right side of the map to get to the windmill Whereas before you were moving, you know, right left to right. I got you. <laughs> no big deal. I just wanted to make sure that you weren't like, whoa, what is this crazy stuff? But you, you have arrived at the windmill, basically. So. Yes, we are approaching it from the west. And, and north is in the south because uh, we got turned around. Right. Correct. And, and, the, and the actual door, the, the, the sort of door that you were able to see that was kind of swung open, I'll mark with a little... Uh, pointer. Because it's not intuitive at all where you would think that it would be. So and if there's anything that you want to investigate, you know, while you're up here, you can. You, one thing is for certain, you know, nobody's kind of coming out of, of the building. So. Okay. Talon um, did heal for uh, her hip yeah. points, by the way. Yeah. You can just adjust your wounds in the character sheet, I believe. You can, but it's not good to do that to a DM. Ah, oh, well. okay. So no, it's not. Oh, I thought it did, would have done that. Oh, I see. I see. So I give you uh, three. Yeah. Back. 
No, no, she gets all five back because she rolled a seven. But um, oh, we, down there, they oh, they just... just rolled it. They just rolled it manually because they didn't have coded healing potions. Or I, I have one on my sheet, and and as a matter of fact, I mean, you probably don't need to do it now because they've already used it. But you could drag it from mine to theirs. But that's probably a waste of time at this point. I'm with you. That's right. They weren't they weren't coded because yep yep. Okay. All right, so we are a healthy party. Good. That's the way I like it. So. Well, no, I still actually have three points against me. I did not take my healing potion. Oh, you didn't take yours. No. I was bragging about how I still have my potion and second win, so I didn't need to do that. I'll get with the program. Okay, now we're good. Now I'll get okay, hit for 10 you, points and die. What would you guys like to do here? Um, we're out of initiative, so... Um, so, uh, this... A uh, bit of brick in front of me. Are there windows there, or the side that you're looking at there, that's facing you, doesn't have any windows. That brick there, um, you can probably ascertain as some type of a hearth, um, where obviously the the structure itself is wood, but uh, wood doesn't make for a very good fireplace, of course. So it's probably it, part of the hearth. Is the arrow to the south, which is really north? Uh, is that a window? That is actually the door. Um, the one that oh, you okay. actually uh, saw sorry, from the, the angle. The blue arrow on the bottom. Oh, I'm sorry, the one that you did. The one that you did. Yes, that is a boarded up window. Ah, it's boarded up. Okay. And I'm assuming the other one is the same. So this place is Correct. looking pretty dilapidated, right? Very, very dilapidated. Very. And, and I know that you can't, the map doesn't allow access on the left side because that's where it ended. But the left side is sort of like the front, how it's just straight wood, no windows, no doors. But I, I mean, I would allow for any kind of movement around the building, just kind of would have to kind of use imagination. D and D imagination. What? What? Who how dare I no. down and smoke them out. Is this a storm Wait, cellar perhaps what? that opens to the, is that what that is? Or is that something else? That is actually, it, I mean, it is two doors that you can access, yes. Oh, snap. What does everybody think of that? Burn it down, smoke them out. <laughs> Burn it down. We should it wouldn't be a game without Susie unless there was a burning shit down. Wait, wrong game. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Burn it down. But if we, if we go in the basement or down through the storm cellar, we might be able to sneak up and you know i don't know i'm just kind of working this out verbally rather than going to do it but what do you guys think i don't sneak very well I've already perhaps given... i should cause a distraction he I likes that idea given... i have already given my solution i think it is a good solution <laughs> well i do have a uh, i do have a, a, a fire bomb <laughs> i think we that you do this. Uh, perhaps we could do that, which may cause people to run out. I am agreeing with this plan. All right. Um. So, set a fire in the basement, burn it down from below? That sounds like a great idea. I'm happy to be a part of this plan. Okay, we can uh, we can make this work. I'm Those going to open these um, doors. Okay, as you as you open the doors now, I'm going to have to describe this a little bit because there's not a map. But the the entrance that these doors sort of lead into it's a very very small cellar. It's actually about it would be ten by ten, so I can kind of mark it with a um, with a uh, Pointer. Whoa. And this entire structure is made of wood, yes? I would say 90% of it. Okay. And what's not wood is like the linen covers of the uh, windmill blades, which, <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> the hearth is about the only thing that's not wood that you can see. So I am going to take my new special weapon that I got off the dude. And I'm going to tinderbox it up and light it, and I'm going to break it all around the area inside the cellar and try to light this windmill on fire. 
I have a tinderbox and I will help. And once that's done, I think we want to. If I if I Stand have the back and watch it burn. Well, I was going to say take flanking positions on either side of the door, and when people run out that we yeah. don't that think are, too? you know, don't think are bad or or do think are bad, we can attack them. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So if I have time after the fire, and I'm assuming the fire will take a little bit to get going, so I'd have time to run around and flank this door. Oh, certainly. You wouldn't have to run. You would have you would have time to walk there slowly, kind of grip your weapon, be ready, and yep. All right, let's see what happens. And then I believe since you're kind of at that location, because remember the, the door was still like a slightly a uh, slightly open, so there's going to be a little bit here that you can see. Oh yeah, and this map isn't going to allow tokens to be in the top row because it's all half a map. Or, I mean, half, not half a map, but half a, you know what I'm saying. I'd say something like that. You could see. Okay. And uh, you, you can you can very quickly kind of <laughs> smell the, the 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 linens, you know, taking effect. They were still uh, pretty well soaked by the oil and and. And uh, you know, wood, especially old wood like this, is is definitely going to take fire. And and you know, even when you got to your positions before the fire really truly began, you were hearing some arguing in Goblin from inside the the structure. And and, mm -hmm. and it seems like the the longer that you kind of stay waiting at the doors, the more that the arguing sort of ensued. Arguing goblin, and um, I because at least one of you can understand goblin. Um, it the the argument basically is like, no, there isn't. Yes, there was. They were there. They're out there. It's impossible. Kind of that kind of disbelief kind of thing back and forth. And I'll be translating as they're talking. You know, perfect. And then you can translate quietly, and they they're still not going to to, yeah. to hear. And you know, within just a few minutes, their argument it just stops cold. And, and you know, they're whether or not you can see this, I'm going to go ahead and tell you they're kind of sniffing, sniffing, and they start arguing again. Did you? Did you? Did you, did you know about you know the demolitions? Did you? Did you have the fire bucket? What did you put with the oil bucket? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And all of a sudden, they're going to come out that door, and they are certainly not aware of your presence whatsoever. So let's go ahead, um, um, let's go ahead and roll initiative, but, but you guys are going to get, you know, some freebies. Surprise roll! We got a lot of freebies, holy smokes. Okay, so. Oh, wow, they had good initiative. Yeah, they did. Well, one goblin kind of comes out the door, and I'm just going to plop him around and have at it, I suppose, huh? Oh, yeah. Um, can I assume uh, advantage on these attacks? I I'd say without question. They they don't know what's what's coming whatsoever. Yeah, they're they're they don't even have their guard up. So uh, we, let's, uh I think we should just attack in order and if they die yeah. then the rest of us will just hold our uh finish holding our actions yeah, for the next one. Works. Mr. So greed. I, guess, I guess we'll go greed would get the first surprise shot. All right, I'm gonna do it. Boo. Uh, but I get... So, is this a surprise round and we get one action, or do I get both of my attacks? You essentially will, because what I was going to do is let the other two take their surprise, and then we would start with you in the actual normal combat. Okay, but n normally a surprise is one action, and so I don't think I would get my second attack. Oh, I, I see what you're saying. Because my second attack is a bonus action, and I don't think in a surprise round you get that. That's probably what I would rule. 
Since okay, this is so just then I'll, real quick I'll, and instant. Right, so I'll take that as my miss, and I'll pass my turn. Luckily, you'll lead the next round. Right. So it is not Goblin 1's turn, after all. It would be Talon, so I'm just going to drag this down. That is a hit. And that is a dead goblin. Nice. Nice damage. I don't think she should have gotten advantage, but... Oh, well. Now, that would bring Father Mulcahy up, and the other goblin... The other goblin is going to be a little bit farther behind. Just um, a little bit farther behind. I'll just hold my action for... Uh... It was already the plan. Hold my action for smashing the next thing. Okay, but that would be within the actual round. So I, I, I guess in a way that does that relinquish the surprise? No, possibility? it's until he gets to hold his action until the beginning of his next turn. Gotcha. Well, what it is is he holds his action until something triggers it, which in this case would probably be the goblin walking out the door. And when the goblin walks out the door, then he gets to take his action. Right, okay. but if the if the goblin did not walk out the door for whatever reason, it would expire at the end of his next there at the beginning of his next turn. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. So that would just put us at the top of the tracker then for And officially... I will do the same thing. I will hold my action until I see an enemy in front of me. Gotcha. All right. Well. <laughs> That's right. And basically, what I, because the the first goblin, it was just almost instantaneous. He goes down. This goblin's momentum. I mean, he's he's trying to get out of a burning building. He's he's not going to stop and say, "Oh, well, what 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 just what just happened?" I mean, he's going to find himself in that spot. So, yep. So uh, let's go to um, Father. I'll, I'll have Father Mulcahy to take the first one then. All right. All righty. And I forgot to click the advantage button, so I'm just going to roll again. That'll be okay. There we go. That would be a hit. Now I'm going to target this goblin, because that's a good idea, and deal some damage. Yes, I know exactly how to fantasy grounds. <laughs> and that goblin goes down in a heap. Well... I don't know how Talon got skipped, but it, it um, should be. It, oh, did you just put it on his had... turn because he had a, a. Oh, I see what happened. Okay. Yeah, I did because that was part of his. Surprise. Yeah, that'll, kinda... that'll that'll confuse everybody, including you, if you do that. I would just I would have just left it on Talon, but but uh, because it's actually Talon's turn, not not Father Mercado's turn. Right. Right, I, that's probably that's probably the way I could have I should have done it. I I felt bad that he missed his surprise opportunity. Well, no, the the thing is, is that you you leave it on whoever's turn it is, and then you just tell the players who have actions to go ahead and do them. But even though it's still Talon's turn, gotcha. Because the whole point of a held action is to do it on somebody else's turn. Anyway, right. uh, Talon. Yes. Would you like to do anything with this building you have begun to burn? I didn't set it on fire. <laughs> not this time. <laughs> not the yeah, not this you time. Helped. Anyway, no. It's shake and bake. Let it burn. All right. Uh, well, if it comes back around to me, uh, I am going to uh, push the door open and step inside. Okay. And see what I can see. Oh, snap. Cover my face with my sleeves, maybe, as I walk in and try and take a deep breath before I move through the door, that kind of stuff. Man who walk into burning building in hot water. Oh, and what you see is the the goblin that um, you recognize. I mean, all goblins do look alike, I know. But this was the goblin that was running away from the earlier encounter. He's got a stick, and he's kind of like poking this large 
brown bear that seems to be just taking a nap next to a spiral staircase. Uh, the other effects in the room are just <laughs> hideously dirty. Uh, Isn't it don't poke the bear? Isn't that the fucking thing and, you're supposed to not do? And, and half-eaten food. And <laughs> there's probably some bugs and some rats and other kinds of things kind of infesting this particular uh, room. Growing up, Greed thought he might have heard several times the phrase, don't poke the bear. Yeah. Okay, so we've got goblins <laughs> poking a bear. We've got... Um, just scanning the room, do I see any signs of bodies? The stairs go up, I believe. Yes. Spiral staircase in the lower left corner do go up. And this structure only has what seems to be either two, uh, you know, medium to larger size levels or possibly three smaller. It's kind of hard to see. Um, this is just a, like an eight, eight to ten foot ceiling in this particular room. And um, I will say that uh, instinctively, the the squares that I have the um, the the orange pointer there, uh, the fire is kind of starting to you know smoke is starting to seep through the cracks of the um, of the planks there, so um, kind of consider that I think as as you guys progress through this. Yeah. Particular. All right. So, um, do I see any sign of halflings? No, not uh, anywhere around. This is not a not a, a particularly large room either. But uh, no, the only the only beings are this halfling, or this goblin, and and the brown bear. All right. Well, I'm going to uh, just walk over, use my maul to bat this uh, goblin aside, and head for the staircase. Um. Do I have surprise on him? Can I get advantage on this attack? Or I'm a, uh, no. I'm gonna say this one. He's he kind of anticipates some somewhat of an encounter because he knew that you were there before and he's kind of frantically poking the bear and kind of looking, you know, out the door and he he, he did see two of his friends get, get slain. So we'll say this is regular. In that case I'm gonna burn my inspiration to get advantage on it. Now you will have inspiration. <laughs> Now you will have advantage. I'm sorry. Oh, oh the my God. love <laughs> of! <laughs> oh gosh! Oh, bad luck. I have one more point of Dagum War Priest. Bonus action for a second attack. Thank you. Nice. So I just like I'm swatting him. I'm deliberately like swinging, so I swat him like over into this upper left or upper yeah upper left corner. So he's away from the bear. And how many spaces did I use there? I think I got like maybe ten more feet. I'm gonna head for the stairs really fast. Okay. And I'm not going to say anything because there's a sleeping bear. And that just doesn't seem like the best plan. Um, I I hesitate to even suggest this, but I should probably roll a stealth check, since I don't actually want to break the wake the bear. But then again, I can't like sneak properly, so DMs call on that. Boomer ET is in. Believe it or not, there will not effect. be a roll needed. In this okay, particular case. Okay. Well, I'm going to pass my turn then. Yeah. I mean, the bear's kind of, you know, it's, I would call it three quarters asleep. You know, it's kind of snoring and, you know, its head was kind of lifting up as that, as that goblin was poking at it. And its eyes were just kind of, you know, just barely opening. And, you know, it's obviously kind of in a, in a long slumber. In fact, turn him around there. I think he's facing that way anyway. So, all right. Greed. Okay, Greed will stroll in. And Greed will begin to... Even though he's got two swords in his hand, he is going to use the, you know, the base of his wrist or whatever to try to pet and calm the bear and hope that, hope that, it, hope that it continues to sleep. 
But should the bear attack or bite me, I will ready a sword attack. Okay, certainly. Um, let's see, Rob. I'm gonna have you animal handling make, and I guess I give you an option. Uh, whatever's better, nature or animal handling. Um, okay. As he in the uh, tower. Um, as he walks in the door, I'm just gonna like point up the stairs. You know, indicate where I'm going. Certainly. Okay. I am going to use animal handling, and I will burn my inspiration for said check. Awesome. Immediately upon stroking the bear's very soft fur, the bear kind of lifts its head. A little bit of kind of drool, kind of dribbling off its lower chin, kind of gross and disgusting. Mm -hmm. And it kind of licks its chops, lets out a little And as sometimes how a kitten would like rub their head up against the leg, the bear does that on the underside of your forearm. Nice. We have a new friend. That was um, an extremely effective use of inspiration. Cool. All right, Taylin. Taylin's going to walk in the door. See that Greed is now petting a bear. Walk over to the table, grab the chicken, and go feed the chicken to the bear. Wait, chicken? <laughs> oh, there's chicken on the table. <laughs> feed the chicken to the bear. I feed the it. chicken to the bear. She's going to make a new friend. All right. Um, I would like you to make an animal handling check at advantage, and I'm just going to flat out tell you to not metagame, with a significantly lower DC. <laughs> awesome. I was going to say, nice. you'd have to roll like a 1 or a 2 to screw this up, and you did roll a 1, <laughs> but your other roll was a 12. Yep. The bear, is, uh, the bear is enjoying that chicken that uh, you took from the table. Excellent use of the prop, by the way. Yeah, okay. Um, now you you um, the 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 building is it's still very slow to burn. I want you to know because the fact that um, um, you know the timbers are you know, you know we're we're still kind of about four feet off the ground from where we had kind of laid out the oil and the linens. But um, enough smoke though is sort of starting to penetrate through this lower area and vision. If we stay in this lower area, will um, soon to, to probably be a bit of a problem. So just so you know, um, I'm going to say that we are out of combat, so we don't have to necessarily move in order. You can just kind of explain what you'd like to do and we can push on. I think yeah, escort I wanna... the bear out of the burning building. Yeah. Using the chicken. Okay. Um... Yeah. Uh, and I would like to head upstairs uh, and search the rest of the building quickly. Um, we found goblins that we didn't expect, a bear that we did expect, but no halfling. So either they've been eaten, which is a distinct possibility given bears and goblins, but I certainly hope not. So upstairs, what can I see to see what I see? All right. Um, I got a tiny little map that I'll push. And you know what? I am not, I don't have any problem. I know I could just share it with you only, but um, I'm going to just assume that you're going to be speaking with um, with your, your friends in just a little bit. And kind of knowing what I know about this, I know that this is probably going to be a safe decision. Oh, shit. It's loot time, everybody. I'm getting in on it. So, Greed, what are you going to call your bear? Oh, boys. Um, I'm going to call the bear... Barry. <laughs> Believe. B-E-A-R-Y, -E Barry. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> loading, loading. Loading. Ah, there we are. And then let me activate a couple of things here. 
first time I ran this, um, I actually ran it as a fourth edition uh, story, um, and I used Fantasy Grounds to the best of my ability, but I didn't really have it um, parsed out, and um, not 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 the best decision, <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was for a tabletop slash face to face or tabletop slash you know virtual group. Okay. What does that map look like? Did it? Uh, I have a small room table in the middle. Uh, it was like a couple of chairs, a stove maybe in the corner. Not sure. Workbench. Um, nothing else on it. Uh, I'm certainly hoping there's supposed to be some uh, NPC tokens up here. Hey! <laughs> it took a while to show up, yeah. What you see up here is just another filth-ridden room, basically, that uh, has just, you know, broken tankards of, of, of drink and plates and and just, um, you know, filth in general. We not, are storming. Not, not the best housekeepers, these goblins. Into the and, beholders uh, in hallway. In the corner there of the room, uh, you do see a halfling um, shackled, in some um, that pretty crude that sort of sort of uh, of cuffs in the corner, kind of kind of tr trembling a little bit as as she notices you. It is a female halfling. Go get her. I'm gonna stride over and say kind of softly, "Punkin Rock." You. You know who I am. Who, who sent you? Mr. Halen sends his regards, along with the rescue. Let oh, me I... see to these. Oh, I thought you would never come. I thought you would never come. Oh, please, please, tell me, tell me, tell me, say that you know something about Happy. Have you seen Happy? Um, I am mostly interested in trying to get these uh, shackles off. Um... Can I just, like, break them, crush them with the mall, uh, rip them out of the wall, something? Yeah, it's not going to be very difficult to do. I'm not going to even have you roll for it. They're a very crude set of, of, of um, restraints. So. Uh, I'm going to break her loose and then um, say, I have not seen your friend. Please come with me, and I'm gonna try. I'd like to pick her up and carry her, like you know, you carry a baby, because that's basically how big she is to me. I'm sure. Good. You probably will have to, because she's pretty somewhat emaciated. I mean, that's the reason why she couldn't break three of these uh, fairly loose shackles. So yeah, that'd be great. Um. So I'm gonna move back over, uh, pick her up, uh, carry her. Uh, as I go back over the stairs, do I think I can get back through that room without, you know, having too much burning troubles? Uh, I'm not sure. Just how, how badly has the fire progressed downstairs, I guess? It's gotten to be to a point where it's just a little bit worse. You'll have to make a, a little bit of a deck save. But, um, yeah, not too bad, though. Could I uh, perhaps use some athletics to just, like, force my way through whatever problems we're having down here? We could do that. Let's see here. Honestly, I'd probably have better chance even if the DC's higher. Ooh. Yeah, oh yes, certainly. If you go with athletics, I'll just say that you're kind of, like, bounding and leaping, maybe springing off of a chair, right? The chair that you could see. <laughs> Using my weight and my size to just force my way through. Uh, yeah, go ahead and make I'm that gonna check. Say, I'm going to say, uh, as I come down the stairs, hold your breath, little one. Hopefully he doesn't read any... Oh, my goodness gracious. Okay, well, that's not, it's not terrible. It's not a 10. Uh, <laughs> hold your breath, little one. Uh, don't want her inhaling smoke, if possible. Not bad. Not bad. Critical fumble tables. Nice. I have a special die roll here for this. 
How many more do I need? Oh. Uh, like 220? Okay, well, that's going to be a while. Okay, you just took three points of fire damage. I'll drag that. And um, that was fire. You don't have a special... Uh, 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 no, I have nothing thing. special against that. Um, um, can I... Uh, I'm... Can I use my body to make sure that I take all of this damage, like shield the girl? Certainly. I'm assuming that she's being held high, like shoulder width or higher, and that damage was more to the leg area. So, no, you're fine. Um, you know what? Because I don't, I don't really expect to need it later, and I feel like I want to. I'm just going to burn. Uh, uh, I start to feel the heat, and I'm just like, I grip my teeth and use Stone's Endurance to reduce that damage a little bit. Let's see if we can... Yeah, my stony, uh, stony resilience is just like, this, this can't touch me. Nice. So you are back to full health. I just come out of the building, walk out of the flaming building, halfling child in my arms. Um... Okay, you could go ahead and make. Uh, I'll uh, I'll move the halfling for you. I come outside. Uh, I found a little friend, but only one. And you found a big friend, it seems. Talon and Greed, is there anything other uh, special that you were doing during this time while you were out there? Um, maybe I was just getting, seeing if there was a bucket or anything I could gather some water in case any friends came out of the building on fire, I could throw the water on them. <laughs> yeah, you're certainly right there. The, that is actually a part, that is a, uh, an active well. Um, and the water might be a little farther down than what you see there, but there is a functioning pail and whatnot that does work. Nope, she's just keeping an eye on the time, making sure that uh, if um, Father Mulcahy had been in there any longer. Gotcha, excellent job, excellent job. Hey, what do you say? Take a little break. We're doing, we're in really good shape, you guys. We're gonna, we will finish easily by eight o'clock, maybe even a little, <laughs> little bit earlier. So you guys are doing a good job with this. So okay. sound like a plan? Sure, how Sounds long? Like a plan. How about 10 minutes? Is that okay? All right. Yep. Sounds good. Works cool. Great. Talk to you in a few. All right. So I'm going to start a 10-minute timer. I'm going to switch the slides for everybody. So we will be back in less than 10 minutes to continue with the game, everybody. Uh, for those of you that are watching, if you haven't hit that follow button, please do so. I appreciate it. Uh, glad you're all here. Also, if you are not on my Discord server, I'm going to post the link for that. You should go to the Discord invite and become a member of our little D&D community. Uh, we concentrate on my Discord server on the Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition as well as Fantasy Grounds Virtual Tabletop. So it's all a nice mixture of everything that's happening here. A Team Rob Tui. I just made that up. There's no Team Rob Tui. There's now because I just said it. But anyway, that's what's happening. So I'm going to put my... Uh, Hey, Tipforge, thanks for the follow. Tipforge, everybody. Uh, appreciate that. Welcome to the channel. And uh, I am going to step away from the keyboard for just a moment. Ooh.
Good to have you back, Ben. It's me, <clears throat> Rob. Oh, so they're not in the order. No, no, it's of... a, it's meant it's also meant to uh, to be uh, anonymous. Interesting. You know why I said that is because when we played, well, the two breaks that we had both yesterday and today with Gwydion's game, it was the the same spot for for at least on my end. Uh, the third one over, I was the third character over from the top. Yeah, but it it, uh, it it is random, so you don't know who's voting for what. And also... It's random maybe for, on the GM side. Yeah, no, it's, it's random for everybody. <clears throat> I mean, well, I mean, on the GM side it might be random, but you don't know who it is. That's the whole point of it, is it's supposed to be a, a silent or a blind vote. Okay, interesting. But the other way you could have told it was me was, at the time, it's not true now, but at the time... Uh, both Talon and Father Mulcahy had Z's on their portraits, which means their keyboards hadn't been touched in a while, and mine did not. So that's you could have. Right. That's one way you could have told it was me. Oh, I will tip and trick you to death by the end of this. <laughs> I'm a poor sleuth. <laughs> I have returned. I am also, glad that I did not stream. To, uh, this would have been a nightmare, I think, trying to to stream with the difficulties. But I'm anxious to kind of watch Rob's later on and kind of learn, kind of watch the watch film. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Have a yeah, film watch film, film and then adjust our plays for the next game. Um, Rob, did did you notice any unusual different names in your stream? I haven't looked. I don't have it running because um, I have a bunch of students that were interested, and I said, well, if I don't stream, you know, you know check. Rob, too easy. I did get you know. already probably four or five uh, followers. Yes, so they're they okay. might be students of yours. Um, good, good. So yeah, so if they are, welcome to whoever they are, your students. For the record, I did hear a bit of that. Um, I'm the third portrait on my screen, but I have the first check mark. It's available. Totally to random. Me. Got it. Random on both sides. That's just ironic that I was in the same spot twice in a row just a coincidence yeah hey mr dm yes sir some inspiration for for, for an act of heroism <laughs> boy you're really milking me for it huh you know you did rescue a halfling from a burning building didn't you i did i did <laughs> You know what? I'm going to go ahead and, and, and make sure that all inspirations are reset. So even for greed, um, kind of resetting after the break. Uh, basically, just the movement of the storyline and the amazing befriending of the bear. That could have gone a variety of different ways. I like that it was asleep and that that goblin was not able to poke it awake. That could have been super bad. Yeah, I made a, a couple really bad rolls on that to, to, in order for it to happen. And, and I, I don't mind kind of metagaming out what, what the case was. But even if the bear was poked, um, that doesn't necessarily mean that it was going to be um, unfriendly to you. Something else had to happen to trigger it. Uh, and, and, you know, meanwhile, obviously you guys figured out that you could also, you know, do things to Heist the bear. It, and it's actually Chris Perkins wrote this as a, it could keep going back and forth. And basically, the last check that's successful is, is who the bear would follow. Oh, nice. All right. Fantasy Grounds is hosting us at this time. That we don't awesome. need to make opposed rolls. There's nothing left to oppose us. So we will switch the and screen. I think so back. far, things have been pretty nicely balanced with only three characters. I, I didn't, I have not had to do anything. Um, as you know, from what it was before, um, which may, makes me think, had we gone with five characters, it could have been a little too easy, and I may have had to uh, beef up some encounters. Yeah, it's been working out. Uh, I mean, I've been a little frustrated, but then again, I've rolled what three ones on attacks so far. <laughs> well, and we did but, have uh, Susie's character went down, so we did have a, a near experience there near death experience yes no so question I, of i think it has been going like it, it it has felt pretty well balanced to me just personally 
Sure. No question. The first encounter was the, the tricky one, but you know, anytime, you know, three versus six in the goblin category, you, you know, all the talk about the, the lost mind of found Delver, that first encounter, and it didn't have six goblins, how they thought that that was a pretty tough encounter. Susie might be back. I am back. See how Welcome I know? I know back. stuff. I can tell things. Yay. You know stuff? Yeah, I know stuff. And you drink? Uh, <laughs> I do I do drink. Diet Coke. A lot of it. Are you Tywin, uh, Tywin Lannister? Is that who you are? You're yeah, a Lannister, aren't you? I am. You I'm, drink and you know things. I drink and I know <laughs> things. And I'm a dwarf. It all makes sense. You are the imp. <laughs> the imp. No, no, the imp is in the four frost dragons game. All right, awesome. so we've got a bear. We've got our friend we've Barry. We've got a halfling. We've got a halfling. That we do. That we and do. is it our is it our mission to return with the bear and the halfling to the uh, city? To the uh, village, I mean. Is I mean, this... uh, this is uh, Pumpkin uh, Rock Hucker. Um, it's the uh, halfway who was taken yesterday, but I didn't see any sign of uh, the other. Happy Shoals. So you don't know where my Happy Shoals is? Pumpkin Rock Sorry. Hucker. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. Softly. That's oh, hilarious. No. Oh no, Tarpu! I I know what he did. Oh, Tarpu, he's done something awful with Happy. Who's Tarpu? What's a Tarpu? Tarpu's this oh damn leader of this vile. Taylor is hot, everybody. Oh, look at that he shit! Keeps saying that when he returns later this afternoon, that he's he's going to make Talon fish and halfling stew. Is hot. I think I'm the halfling part of that stew. No. I don't suppose you could make your way back to the village on your own from here, could you? I I look over at uh, uh, Talon and I just shake my head. No, we're not going to send her back alone. Well, we can send her back with the bear. She, um... um <laughs> yeah, there you go. She could ride the bear. Exactly, see? She could totally ride the bear. And Smiley I mean, Bob, I mean, if the bear, but the, can the bear understand what we're telling it? That's the thing. Does anybody speak bear? <laughs> is this Smiley Bob? You notice that this bear does have a scar on its right oh, side. Oh, snap. Of its, uh, there we face. go. Yeah, pro I probably should have told you that. Yes, but yeah. It had assumed, personally. Um, but I am conflicted. Um, one more thing that... Um, that pumpkin does is she mentions something to you. She says she's so disgusted as she keeps thinking about Tarpu that she kind of goes on and on and says, oh, you didn't get a chance to see up there, but oh, hidden under a pile of clothes and, and, and whatnot in a corner of that room, there's a box that contains a bunch of blonde wigs that these, these halflings, they, they wore these wigs and they, or, I'm sorry, these goblins wore these wigs and, and they pretended to be us and they trained that bear to, to snatch us and, and carry us away. I, I couldn't believe that, that I, in, the, in, the, in the day and a half that I was here, what, what they were having this bear do. And, and I can only think that they're going to probably use this bear or we're going to use this bear to go get more of us. Did you see how the how they what command they told the bear to go to the to your city? Uh oh. Uh oh, what happened? Did we lose a GM? We might have. Up, oh, can you hear me? Yep. Sorry, I don't know what what of that last piece that you didn't catch, but she's saying that they were speaking in goblins, so I couldn't really hear any of their commands. They were just grunts and so forth. Mm. 
Just about at this time, I need the three of you to make a perception roll in the tower. Ah, uh, bother. Oh, bother. <laughs> it's a Winnie the Pooh theme now. <laughs> the wonderful okay. thing about Tiggers? That's <laughs> not that's not the tower. Woohoo! <laughs> Missed. Uh that's what I want. There we go. Oh, okie dokie. Um, I am going to Christmas. move you guys to another map um, because this one's um, a little deficient in some of the things that I need to do, but I'll kind of explain the situation. Yeah. Close it. It's We've situation. probably moved away from this location anyway, just because, you know, this building is burning down and I don't want to get hit by it. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Bits of falling, burning trouble and stuff. Do 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 uh do 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 Trolls have gone back to normal. The dungeons are ripe for delving. Type exclamation And you can position yourself or reposition yourself in any certain order you know, within a square of where you are. Um, and, and the same goes for the bear. And then I, I know the halfling I've got to kind of throw in there. Um, I don't see a map. And the reason is because I haven't shared it. <laughs> Here's a little tip for everybody. If you know you're on a map and you don't see the map, you can double-click the right That's portrait right. on your character sheet. I remember that. I figured that out myself instead. I promptly forgot it. I could use it for a couple of weeks. Wait, what? Uh, on your character sheet, if you double click the right portrait, it will open the map that your token is on. Ah, even really? even without it being shared. Uh, oh. correct. That's cool. Rob, you ought to when you come to Gen Con, you ought to look into doing um a. a a, a training session for Fantasy Grounds. Well, I've I've told Doug Davison that I'm willing to help with anything SmiteWorks related while I'm there, and he has not tasked me with anything yet. But if uh, you know, I I don't know. I mean, because I would need to have a table, or you know, I, I'd have to probably set something up and actually sign up for a booth. The other thing I could do is just invite people to my hotel room and just run it, you know, whatever. I mean, I could do that, but, but, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I definitely would be open to that. I just don't know how to organize such a thing. And right. Yeah. If I, if I said, you know, come to my hotel room after, after one of the days and there was five people, that'd be great. But if like 70 people signed up, I'd be screwed. You know, I wouldn't know what to do. Um, right. Taking over a Denny's, you know, I don't know what will he because I'm I'm sure that with space in the convention center itself, that all has to be pre organized and everything. But not Denny's, Perkins, Perkins, <laughs> Chris Perkins, exactly. That is a how could no, I no, no. They're not Denny's out there, they're Perkins. Oh, I thought That's you were being the restaurant. Oh, I thought you there, there's Denny's, there's Denny's everywhere. I think there's like three or maybe two left Denny's left, not not many. Yeah, there are probably as many Perkins now. In my town, yeah. there used to be like four Perkins. Now there's one, and but there are like seven Denny's. But I live in the mm. Northwest, so yeah, I definitely want to kind of organize a gathering for for Fantasy Grounds users. Um, in 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 the I can kind of organize that and maybe even make some reservations if we want to go grab a bite somewhere. Well, and, so if you're yeah, whatever you want to do, I'm totally down with any of it. Just just count me in. We got several months to plan, so good. Right. Um, um, I did have a question, and now I got excited about what we were talking about and forgot. So never mind. Oh yes, no, I know what I was going to say. Did you also know that you could, uh, from the combat tracker, drag the green helmet, and it will drag all the tokens at once onto the map? No, I've been doing it one at a time. I did not know that. Yes, you can do that with green and yellow and red. So if you wanted, if you had a bunch of monsters. Like the time you put the 47 monsters on the wrong layer, you could have just deleted all tokens, grabbed the red helmet, drag them all on. And it, it's going to put them in a line, but you could reorganize them, but it's a lot faster. Oh, yeah. That would have been nice. That would have been nice knowing that. All right. Well, 
the bad news is that you all failed your perception check, but the good news is um, you're not going to be surprised. You're just not going to gain surprise. So as you kind of move away from the, um, the windmill a little bit, you kind of look up ahead and, and you see a, a gang of five goblins approaching the windmill, pretty much from the bridge area that you were at. Um, all of them are wearing piecemeal leather armor and, and are kind of, you know, they, they were what what you may have thought kind of was laughing and converting as they walk kind of kind of starts to turn to a little bit of concern because they see the smoke rising up from the um from the uh the building and, and two of them are carrying a small barrel that uh, let me go ahead and let me go ahead and uh yeah that's probably bad unmask and i think i have a goblin that didn't want to show up here so let me that is probably really bad. Carrying a barrel full of what? Okay, there we go. So they uh, are aligned sort of like that. The two that are walking side by side are kind of the two that are carrying a barrel. Um, and, uh, all of them, are, uh, those two that are carrying the barrel are also carrying fishing poles made out of spears. And then the fifth goblin that's in the back looks to be a little bit more authoritative. You can kind of see that he's a slightly different icon and, uh, he is carrying a bow and a, has a quiver of arrows slung across his back. And, uh, they see you, you see them. It's, it's virtually simultaneous. And, um, I think there's probably roll nothing more to do. Roll initiative. Roll initiative. Um, for Susie and uh, our DM has graciously uh, granted us all inspiration once again for our uh, heroism in the previous uh, encounter. Excellent. Inspiration part duh. Part duh, everybody. And I'm not last on the, uh, the, the, the initiative. Yes. These goblins rolled horribly, I don't mind telling you. <laughs> okay, it looks like we're all set. Um, I'm going to start us at round one. This is where you would hear a really cool sound effect. goes boom, 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 boom. Did I do that right, Rob? It's pretty close. I am two or three games away from the sound effects. I, I'm getting pretty close. So your your guys' help has been pretty valuable there okay well the first to go happens to be this large or larger let's say um, goblin um, figure in the back and he he kind of you know makes sort of a a a, a, a kind of a authoritative gesture towards the windmill and in a very mean voice and goblin um, says you know those insolent fools! How they're supposed to stay at the windmill and watch the bear, and the windmill's on fire. But he says that in Goblin, so he <laughs> sees you and he comes towards you. And thirty feet movement. I'm going to remember that this time. And he is going to take a. Javelin. Actually, disadvantage. Uh, oh, <laughs> bitch. He, I do not have him coded with his bow with like he is supposed to have. So it takes me two seconds to drag that. I apologize. Let's see, what is it? Long crossbow plus five. Is that what I'm looking for? Uh, I hope not. I what? hope not. <laughs> oh, just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> Is that what I'm looking for? I fucking don't know. Plus five left of a basically one shot okay, all of us. Uh, yeah, out of her regular katana pocket, Talon is going to pull a plus five and hand it to one of the fighters. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, no. Okay. Uh, Rob, I cannot drag an item once they're in the combat tracker, right? I have to do that onto like an NPC sheet first. Uh, are you trying to equip the weapon? 
Right, just equipping it. Yeah, it you, you 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 have you have to do it by coding it. You can't just drag a weapon on the on the NPC. Um, so you'd have to open the record and and edit it and add an attack, and then you'd have to type out the whole like two hit plus one reach five feet. You know, you'd have to type it out in that whole special format. It might take you a few minutes to do that. Perhaps just uh But the other thing is that it's something. in the uh it, it it I'm assuming that oh you oh you don't have the dungeon math or the uh, monster manual and all that, right? You don't have those those books in Fantasy Grounds. Yeah, yeah, I've got I've got Monster Manual. I've oh you do. So I'm... so mm-hmm. the the easiest way to do it would be to find an NPC that has the attack you're looking for and then just cut, cut and paste that into Tarpo. Gotcha. But it, you know, th- th- I mean, hunting that down is still going to take you. I mean, unless you already know. And I'm assuming the other goblins don't have, like, do they have slings or something that's a similar attack, a ranged attack? Ooh, I think I found what I want. Okay, so then, yeah, because you can just copy it over. But you, yeah, dr- dragging a weapon from the weapons table and dropping it on NPC record doesn't work. It's not as because those are handled by Fantasy Grounds completely different than the PC characters. And you know for those I, of you I'm that are not familiar with I'm, Fantasy I'm, Grounds, you I'm, have no got an friggin' idea. clue what the hell I'm talking about. I have lots of ideas, but like I'll show you what I, I'm talking about. I'm editing Chris Perkins anyway. So okay. this is no, a character we're sheet. Just, we're going to be balanced. We're going to be fine. And this is an NPC record, and so he has to type in like melee attack weapon plus one to hit reach five okay. feet one well, target hit five. He does have a javelin. That type he's, all that he's shit carrying, in but he knows that that would be certainly at disadvantage at this point. So what he's going to do, dash, what he is going dash, to do rather, is take just a few more steps forward, kind of using part of dash, and he's going to like stop right there. Damn it! And he does. He was whip out a, a pretty intimidating sword at that particular location, and he also has the javelin kind of readied in another hand, kind of saying, "Let's start this." Oh snap! Okay, it's on, bitch. Taylor, monk that shit. You got a forty foot movement. Ooh. Hey, Rabio. Thanks for the follow. No I hope problem. I'm saying that right. It could be Rabio. It could be Rabio. It could be R A A B O. I don't know. I just have to make a guess. So thanks for the follow. I appreciate that. We're up to okay. 430, everybody. To 70 to go. 70 to go till a Fantasy Grounds license is a giveaway. 500 followers. I give away a Fantasy Grounds license. 70 more to go. It does hit. Dart that for bitch. four damage, and obviously the combat tracker gives it away. But you would assume that this is, of course, Tarpu. I thought about calling it Large Goblin, but hey, you're going to figure it out soon enough. He's just the closest one to me, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. Also the boss. All right, uh, and I'm going to. Uh, we're going Bestiality to burn down this boss. It's just the fad that necrophilia I'm never dies. I'm going to use my uh, so recently granted inspiration. Thank you very much for advantage, and say kidnapping halflings, die scum, and cast guiding bolt. Hits. Burn. Oh, snap! And Tarpu <laughs> goes up in a heap of flames. Oh, oh, oh. That was crazy. I'm going to shout towards the other goblins, Where's the other halfling? And I don't, they probably don't understand me because they probably don't speak common, but that's okay. They shiver a little bit. I need to make a, a few rolls for those guys. I swear to God, I thought you were going to say they shit their pants. 
I mean, I did just turn their leader into ash. <laughs> He can't use All such right. foul language. He's a teacher. The one in the front shits his pants. Seeing Tarpu waylaid makes a beeline straight <laughs> down. Oh, no. There's that fire crap behind all these trees. Remember? <laughs> Remember? Uh-huh. Yeah, there was some of those. Damn it, that's okay. Hey, Emra, 1983. Uh, this is and, actually... Uh, uh, pu uh, Pumpkin um, is in the combat tracker, but... This is a... Uh, as feeble and as weak as she is... How can I explain she's it? She's just kind of just standing and, and taking in what's going on. Maybe, uh, you know... I actually forgot. I meant wait till there's a break hide then, little one up. before I w went up there. Whoopsie. No, this is uh, anyway, this is sorry. fantasy grounds. Um, Smiley Bob is next, and, and and Smiley Bob is just kind of you know going and kind of through the motions. As just soon walking, as he stops talking, I'll of, start talking. Kind of taking his tongue and getting the the last can remnants I, of chicken. Can I look at him and tell him to eat the goblins? You eat can goblin. You so can the, definitely do that. You'll need. I guess to I make can't. I guess I have to talk over handling him. check. The uh, to do the, so. the fantasy ground uh, the program is called Fantasy tower? Grounds. It's at that link. It's awesome. It's the best virtual tabletop bar none. It doesn't even roll twenty doesn't even come close. And the answer to your question he about the game looks at you almost like he misinterprets what you're saying and thinks is, that you said, "I have more chicken." That's oh, what he shit. <laughs> so, is really this this, this is a fourth edition adventure written by Chris Perkins that the DM converted himself. That's over that's, to Fantasy I mean, Grounds. As part of his turn, I'll have and so sort of as a bonus act. It is a Watsy adventure. Okay, greed. Okay. I am... I can see that goblin down there, number one, right? I can just see him. Yeah, you could because of that that's a, tr a tree. Yeah, you got line of sight on him. Okay, yeah. I'm going to go toward him. And I am going to shoot my trusty short bow at his face. Shoot his face in the face. And kill him. Wow. While he was running away in stride, your arrow sticks him right in the neck. You're goes goddamn the right other it side, does. Almost equidistant on both sides, the, the, the fleshing and the arrow part, and he just falls flat on his face and skids maybe two feet in the process. Beautiful. Nice. Uh, nice. I'm okay. DMing my own homebrew camp. Goblin yeah, Fantasy two, Grounds would be great. That, um, uh, as, a, as a DM, a you'd have to purchase to it, master, but as a player, master. you can play for free. It's going to make a uh, And the only reason you have to purchase it as a DM is that if you do the free version, only one Still person there. can connect to you. And he will target Father Mulcahy. But yeah, this is an awesome. And if you want to check out more of how this all works, you can go to my YouTube channel because I have about 250 videos. Of all of tricks of all this shit. So go check it out. And he misses. The arrow flies over the top of Father Mulcahy. Also, if you want to connect with people, I have one trick left. Uh, Chain come, mail. Come to my uh, Discord channel. Uh, many, many yeah, people in there free. talking about fantasy grounds and stuff all the time. Yes, yes. Excellent. With his short bow. And does hit. Oh, no. I guess I know what I'm doing. What the hell? <laughs> you, you you go sleep. Or? I'm... I'll wounds are six. Wait. I'm sorry there. You're sorry, at two I'll have to... I have to wait until my turn. But... Oh, so you didn't go down. Okay. No, I had 
accidentally rolled an extra damage dice for some reason. I must have double clicked. Goblin four, abusing the diagonal roll, <laughs> is going to target greed. Hi, Jumper. Is your push to talk the shift key? Yes, it is. Ah, so you rolled you rolled crit damage on her, uh, not meaning oh, to do it. Oh, I was and speaking. You gotta, yeah, thanks. you gotta watch out for that. I do that all the friggin' time. That explains it. Okay. I moved my push to talk up to caps lock for that reason. That's just not a bad idea. Unfortunately for me, the shift key is the most comfortable key to use. If I even go one key different, it's like a reach, and I will get carpal tunnel. I don't know what's going. On. Oh my god! Right. Speaking of crit, oh. <laughs> holy shit! You, you had to, to bring it up, something, didn't you? Okay. Now I will not have to depress shift because it will be automatic, right? Oh, it's going to be automatic. Yeah, that's going to suck. Damn it! Oh, Ow. the greed goes down. <laughs> I have a healing potion on me. <laughs> and don't you have second wind or something like I that? I do, but I can't use it if I'm unconscious. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, How much damage did he do? Top. Holy moly. Oh, 11. Oh, my God. He must yeah. have rolled like, almost pretty good. A six and a three, and then he had his plus two. Yeah. Uh, I'm fucked, everybody. Okay, Taylor. I have a final question, and for I'm reading about it and seeing that there are 242 tokens and such right. available. Um, Does that mean it is fixed amount, Taylin or is not are you able to upload your own from the web? Oh no, you can totally up <laughs> upload your own tokens. Absolutely, and many people do. Um. However. Yep, you can totally op upload your own tokens. She's going to run over here because she knows he has a healing potion and he is the crunchy bits of the group. Yay. Take it out take it out of his bag and shove it in him. <laughs> Not really caring what orifice it goes in as long as it goes in him in some way, shape, or form. And I took care of that. Healing potions are systemic. That's right. Yes. Yes. All right. Excellent. Good use of your turn. Padre zero. Stupid goblins, <laughs> scum. I'm gonna walk over here and turn this one into paste. Hopefully. Please don't die. It's not in the plan. I'm so scared. I've rolled badly every time. Ooh. Hey! About to... Hey, thanks for the follow, Emra. Emra 1983 has followed. We are at 431, 69 to go. 69, everybody. Mom, That's right. Basically. You heard me. 69 followers, and I so. give away a free Fantasy Grounds license to one of my Anything followers. Else? No, nope. and if that follower that. already has fantasy grounds, they I can spin give it my mall around menacingly as I turn to the other two or a loved one, a gamer. Pumpkin say. actually, you know, takes a few steps forward, kind of seeing the situation, surveying. Mm, 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 she mm. sees a rock on the ground and picks it up and will throw it at disadvantage towards. Goblin 2. Do it. And she's not coded with a weapon, so I'm going to improvise. Ooh. All right. Oh, no. Ace Mustachio has followed. Ace Mustachio, everybody. A valiant those, attempt, but the rock. Those follower notifications should wide. be coming up on the wide screen. Wide left. And Smiley Bob just kind of like. Um, Are they showing up? Licking the chops again. Not really showing much interest in anything. I don't know why it's not doing it. But he does have a name now. Edie Greed. Does. Oh, right. Like I was it. calling him Barry and his actual name Smiley Bob. Yeah, I should have did that long ago. Fixed that. Wow, those notifications aren't showing up. They should be. I don't know why they're not. Oh, maybe there's a... Oh, there, there it is. Greed is up. Yeah, they're they're working. 
They might have a. They might have a. Th- Ooh. White Saruman. I believe that's a or Lord of the Rings reference. Saruman. I don't know. Thanks for the follow. Thanks for the follow, baby. Baby is a term of endearment that is applied to any gender of sex. Nobody freak out. We still on Discord, okay? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. I thought I had messed something up. So your turn, Rob. Oh, that's what <laughs> we got like three followers, and I was all I wasn't paying attention. That's my fault. So I am are going you, are to. Are you playing your iPad again, Rob? <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I'm totally not playing my iPad because I know you're you're so so afraid I was going to bust out my iPad. Well, see, I was going I was going to unfollow you too if you ever <laughs> made fun of my my state. <laughs> Oh my God! Yes, don't live in California, or I will make fun of you. Um, I'm gonna sh- no, a thirty feet. Oh no, I'm gonna. Uh, you, I believe, are prone, sir. Oh yes, that's right. I am prone. I wasn't marked prone, but I Correct. do. Yeah, I, and I didn't mark it with. The, okay, I have it so written down on paper. I'm going to. <laughs> I love it. I'm going to stand up, and then I will shoot my bow. Uh, at goblin that guy. And once Return I do fire. that, that is a hit. Heavy I damage. will then drop my bow and draw one of my swords. Okay, Goblin 2. Goblin's for you. Kind of surveying the situation. I wanna I wanna go to the, the, the greatest threat, so to speak. I believe it is that tree. That tree. <laughs> That's the greatest threat. Come and get us, bitch. I mean, might well be me. <laughs> Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna go to to Mulcahy. He actually he actually says something in passing to his other goblin friend, kind of talking some goblin. Oh, that's strategy. probably bad. So Goblin Two actually has a scimitar. That's probably bad. And he misses Father Mulcahy with his scimitar. Yes, glancing and... off my shiny mail. It's actually not and very shiny. Gonna... I take super good care of it. He's going to then, after he comes up and does a little slash with you, he's going to do a nimble escape. Punk ass bitch. Not to worry. 30 feet, right about there. Goblin 3 is still focused on the other group, but he's going to change his focus towards the dwarf bring it there i heard him made him angry bring it okay it took me a second to get him targeted and he i might have turned on my light it's almost four o'clock and it's starting abusing to abusing the diagonal rule. Get a little dark outside. Attacks with the scimitar. <laughs> He's gonna abuse the rule. I love it. And all that for a terrible miss. Terrible miss. He's gonna utilize his nimble escape as well. It doesn't matter. You can't run. I'm gonna come get you. I will come and get you. And he is Wait. finished. Back 10, to the top, Talon. Uh, uh, all right. Oh, that's nice that he's finished. I'm pretty sure he is finished. Yeah, because I'm gonna throw another dart at. I'm gonna throw a dart at him. Nope. Oh, just misses. Mm-hmm. All right, so I'm going to stride up, and I'm moving between these two, but I'm just going to 
lazily take a swing at this Goblin 3, I think, as I go after his little friend. Say hello to my little friend. Holy And that just misses. Or maybe I won't. Maybe I'll just, like, swing and a miss. And I can't actually keep these guys from running away, but... Oh, well. Pumpkin takes a couple of steps north and just screams Terrible. at the top of my at the top of her lungs. Where's my happy? What have you vile creatures done with my happy? She's able to find another rock and she'll chuck it. Uh, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Ooh, a shot. I, I want to give her no disadvantage. And the rock sails wide once again. Wide right. Smiley Bob licks his chops. Greed is up. Uh, you should move, Father. Oh yeah, please, thank you. And then Greed that. will go there. And as he runs, he will draw his second short sword. And it is go time. Wow, Boo. bad luck on these last few. That hits. Oh, and yeah. That kills. He's satisfied. Goblin 2 will make a roll and is just loyal to a fault, but is also not stupid to disengage to take the... He's going he's gonna to go down fighting, basically. Oh well. Targeting okay. Father Mulcahy. Okay. Trouble a chasin. Misses. We'll do a little nimble escape, thinking, thinking that he's got a shot at getting away. And you see a stream of urine <laughs> behind. <laughs> uh, I love it. Halen. Oh boy. And he thinks that he's going up. Oh, what the heck? We'll throw another. We'll throw a dart at him. But I'm going to spend one of my inspiration to give, to take away the disadvantage that I would okay. have. Regular attack with dart. And just misses. Kind of nips him in one of his pointy ears. All right. All right. Do it. 10, 20, 30. Go do it. Just to make sure, I haven't actually seen any sign of uh, Happy. Nope. No other halfling seems to be around these parts. All right. And there's always ways that you can find out. Yep. One of them being taking a prisoner, because we've got somebody that speaks Goblin. Maybe, but not with that kind of a swing. Damn it. Give it. Punkin, obviously now seeing that the odds are much, much more in her favor. Um, again, screaming at the top of her lungs. What did you do with my beloved happy, you vile, vile? And she's going to have tremendous disadvantage on this rock throw. It's amazing how she's just able to find these rocks, huh? They're all just misses. lying around. Hey, let her keep throwing them. Smiley Bob, um, feeling quite loose after his little meal, begins to um, do what bears do. Greed is up. 
Okay, Greed will dash to there. Just in time for Goblin 2 to just kind of boom, kind of almost basically run into you and and kind of become startled and and uh, whatnot and whatnot. And um and what you know what? It's it's we're gonna let the dice decide. A one, two, three. A one, two, three would be the greed, and a four, five, six will be happy. And he wants greed. He wants greed. I meant uh, Mulcahy rather than happy, but he wants greed. I was going to say, I was a little bit confused there for a second. I want to target greed, and there I go. Scimitar? Boy, the goblins have really had a lot of bad luck. Terrible miss. Um, he can go ahead and do Excellent. his nimble, but um, he's definitely... <laughs> he's... Ugh. He's kind of running out of options, and I'm I'm running out of map. <laughs> <laughs> Theater of the mind. We chase the goblin and see who can get a daggum hit on the thing. And back to the top, Talon. Are we going to chase this goblin until eight o'clock? Is that is that what we're going to do? <laughs> Certainly not. If not. I have anything to say about it. Knock him out. We need to know where the other halfling is. She's going to run up there and she's going to smack him with her quarterstaff. For non-lethal damage. Yes. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. And it missed. Oh my god, she's going to punch him in the face. is definitely non-lethal damage. Oh, wow. But that hits. And he's wounded. Still flailing around, though. Father Mulcahy? I'm going to move up, try to catch him. I'm also trying to knock him out. Hit him with the butt of my maul instead of the heavy end. Nope. And this. Son of a... Stand still, you blighter! It's like chasing a greased pig. It really is. Now, would everybody just freak out if Pumpkin Rock Seeker, Rock Hucker, I'm sorry, picks up a rock and, and kills him? <laughs> and just kills, kills him, Dad. There's her 25. She happens to find a rock. Oh, this one's a good rock, you guys. It's a good, very nicely shaped aerodynamic rock. Uh, she still gets disadvantaged because she's more than 20 away. And misses. I was almost hoping she'd kill him. But she's friend. getting closer. Greed is up. Okay, Greed will go there. And we'll attempt to non-lethally strike the goblin. He is struck. And he is consciously subdued. I rolled a he 1 is... on that, by the way, and it gave me a 6. That's so awesome. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he is um, prone, down, alert, but not going anywhere. I'm going to grab right. him, hold him by the throat, probably. I'll Big turn. Big hand to, on his chest, something. I'll turn and to uh, restrain Pumpkin and say, hey, hey, let's get some information. You uh, just got to her right when she was getting ready to beat on his chest with her <laughs> arms. I just just when she was there, you actually like caught her and swung her up in the air, uh, uh, keeping her from actually touching him. And she's just still hysterical. What about Happy? Uh, not to Taylor. 
let's try and find out some information and then you know if it's <laughs> if we get what we need or if we don't if we're unhappy then we'll let you avenge happy okay i'll start questioning about the whereabouts of this happy wait what is happy happy <laughs> shoals is the other halfling i'll start questioning him about the other halfling go ahead and make um make an intimidation check I'd like to assist with that. In the tower? Yeah, you in the tower and do so at advantage then. Okay. He is quivering. And he says, oh, you, you, are, you won't kill me if I, if I tell you that we... We eat happy yesterday. Oh shit! I let go of uh, I let go of um, pumpkin. I take she a step back. Just starts wailing <laughs> on this goblin, just beating this goblin with their <laughs> side of the fist, just pounding oh, him in the head. Oh my god! Him, this is classic. Him, to a point where where um, this goblin does fall unconscious. And, yes. I say we I, take him back to the village and let them deal with him. I would like to uh, try and console uh, Pumpkin, I guess, and draw her away. <laughs> like, okay. You know what? Go ahead and make. Uh, gosh, this could be a variety of different checks. Um. Um. Yeah. <laughs> instead of nature make a nurture check right right this is where we need 3.5 <laughs> i think you know um i i would say maybe insight would would be appropriate you know or you know what you could even do performance you know you're you're kind of putting on it's almost it's it's like confession father you know you're just <laughs> consoling um I'm gonna, mm, 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 yeah. Mm, mm, Boys, we'll go for it. It's got my best modifier anyway. Okay. Very well done. She, you've got her under control. Obviously, wow. she's very sad. I'm her, a yawner. Her hysterics and 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 you know the just kind of going crazy type of behavior. Not bored. I'm just freaking tired. Be, um, uh, probably in her future at this point. So you are going to take. Uh, you're are going to go back to River Sly, you say? We're going to go back to River Sly. Uh, once I've got her a little bit under, once I've got her calm down, but I'm going to pick up the goblin um, and uh, I'm just going to break its neck, twist its head around backwards and toss its body off into the bushes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, very well. Give it that too. Excellent. Nice. Um, I don't think I don't think I need to to display the river slide map because I think we can just really quickly RP this out. But um, we'll say that you you enter the village um, as you get kind of closer to the village. Pumpkin does sort of kind of start quickening her pace and and runs just a little faster into actually one of the the nearby um, cottages that that are pretty close to the 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 beginning. Um, the front entry of the of the commune, if you remember, and you know, even just within just a few steps of, of you kind of getting to that location, she, she you see her kind of being consoled by uh, what you feel to be her mother, um, kind of rubbing her head, and obviously very elated that she's there, but understanding that uh, her daughter's in quite a bit of pain, and um, this kind of alerts some of the rest of the villagers, and 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 Mayor Harlan comes back out. And um, he, he sees the bear, obviously, and he's a little bit hesitant at first, but the obviously bears? seeing that. Go ahead. The, the bear's okay. He's, he's all right. And I'll explain to him what went on with the bear and why he was doing what he was doing. You've, you've got Bob. And Bob seems to be his old self once again. Some goblins. 
we're tormenting him, training him to hate halflings. But I think we saved him. Oh, it's so, so wonderful. It's so wonderful that you were able to find both Pumpkin and Happy. Uh, I know the town will be just elated. By the way, where, where is Happy? Eaten. <laughs> we were not. I, I give, uh, I give Taylor like a stern look and then say, we were not in time to save Happy. I am sorry. Oh my God, I'm crying. <laughs> Big pardon. Oh, the bear is probably crying down. too. It's he like he that, looks down. That scene in Seinfeld where they were explaining the the cabin was burned down. What happened with the cabin? George burned. <laughs> Eden. He he gone. <laughs> he gone. Well, Harlan obviously is distraught by this, but you know he looks up and and he shakes his hand. They are apparently not as enamored with that and, and as like I was. Sort of this affirmation of strength and and understands that sacrifices did indeed have to be made and i think we will we will <laughs> definitely do right by happy and and, and i think maybe erect a, a small stone or or a tribute to him here and and um and, and then just we'll have to move on with our lives but i know that pumpkin she will be the the roughest it'll be for us for her because she she was engaged to happy sometimes you're the bear sometimes you're the halfling <laughs> It'll be fine. You should know. We killed all the goblins we saw. None escaped. But there may be more. Be vigilant. And burn down the windmill. We also did that. And I would say we're getting pretty close where you probably start to see the smoke <laughs> rising in the air. So, and I think with with some of that information too, the rest of the halflings kind of come out and 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 they're kind of celebratory, with a little bit of melancholy for the loss of Happy, but at least they know that their problem is 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 um, taken care of. And even a few of the kids actually start to come up a little closer <laughs> Where's that? to Smiley Bob, trying to approach, trying to approach, and then Smiley Bob goes Rawr! and kind of scares the kids away. But that's what Smiley Bob does. <laughs> so you have a gem that is now in your possession, a beautiful amethyst gem with some various uh, collections of coins, mostly silver and, and copper, uh, with a few uh, gold mixed in between. Uh, once again, I, I didn't, it wasn't going to be my intention to drag things onto the party sheet, but I, you know, if by some chance these are characters. <laughs> that you enjoy and I if we ended up you know crossing paths again I can certainly work on these characters and and uh, make those adjustments and so forth and uh, most likely they would probably be looking at level having been leveled up and so forth but it's it's totally up to you I didn't know if you wanted to export anything or, or what have you um my personal taste would be not to export it but that if I was ever in one of your games again and would uh, happily play this character. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Okay, that's great because I know now who they belong to and uh we can certainly we can certainly do that. Guys, I had a blast. You, you're, this was that, a perfect group. That was great. And I liked it. I, I I think it really worked out nicely that it was just the three of us. It went mm -hmm, really definitely. it seemed really fast to me. I mean, I can't believe it's over, but uh I yeah, had, a good, it did. had a great time. Yeah, obviously, 45 minutes early. Part of that, I think, is a function of just the three players. But um, I, you made some amazing decisions. The What you did with the windmill, I, I don't think could have been any more efficient. <laughs> um, because you were looking at another encounter, you know, downstairs. And I think without the fire, the ch chances of the bear possibly being an adversary could have been greater because, you know, uh, the, the the goblin that was in there had to be very, you know, hasteful in trying to to wake to wake uh, the bear. So that worked out really, really well. And then there was a chance that after you had befriended the bear, it would have taken a very high DC role on the part of Talon, I believe, to have actually attacked these goblins. That could have been fun. Yeah, that was really great, though. Two people knocked down, but uh, yeah, woo -woo. and I got to melt a goblin leader, so that was fun. <laughs> and we did use all three healing potions. 
That's right. That's right. And you have a bear in your possession the next nice. time that we play. <laughs> now, like I said, it will take it'll take some training, but we'll have to kind of see how that goes. But you definitely have you had an exceptional role on that. That it was an 18 on that nature check. It was a natural 18 on that first animal handling. So yes, I definitely she, learned a lot. I, I think all she, of you for your help. I mean, if we wouldn't have had this going if it weren't for Ben. You know what? Bob, you've been just absolutely tremendous. I'll um, tell you, Jeff. Susie, both on. you and Geo are just you know wonderful members of the community, <laughs> and it's just great to to have people like you. And I look forward to trying to do a few more of these. And and I also do quite a bit of Star Wars, um, uh, Edge of the Empire. I think a part of that kind of cuts into my you know, the speed at which I can really learn the fifth edition mechanics with fantasy grounds, but